The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light come. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. It is time to keep your appointment. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode one hundred and four zero. One hundred and four zero. I I am Gav. And I'm Dan, and Gav, you sounded like a robot then, but he did that on purpose. I uh, will say, actually, at times I get a bit of gack in my throat, and it, 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 uh, I have to clear it. It's a bit like how horrible it must be to kiss and kiss one of those alien, those face huggers, and as they slowly plop out eggs down into your mouth and throat. It's horrible, isn't it? Well, there's a graphic image to kick things off. Um, It'd be horrible, also, wouldn't it? The word gack also is slang for cocaine in many parts of the UK. Gav is not referring to having cocaine in the back of his throat. He means a little bit of saliva, From thick saliva. Cold, I had. Yeah, yeah. He, got, he was a bit ill. Well, there we go. That's the interesting way to start it. But this is episode 140. Gavin, my good, good buddy, my topless friend, as always. How the devil are you? Very, very. <coughs> Jesus. <coughs> Talk of the See? devil. That's the devil coming out. Oh, I'm coming out and just. Does my uh, mother start cocking now? I don't know. The devil's over in the corner now, just sitting over there, doing stuff. But, he can hang out with Bill Murray later. Lovely. I'm I'm grandson. I'm grand. How are you? Your grandson. I'm my grandson. Well, I'm a granddaughter, baby. I was a grandson. You were. You can I be was a granddaughter. Grandson. You can be anything you want nowadays. You can. Uh, so I overheard somebody the other day get asked their age, and they said, I don't identify as a particular age. They were joking, of course, but I thought that's really good, and I might start using that one. Because I don't feel my age, so, you know. No, I don't feel my age. No. Well, there we go. This is episode 140. We don't know where we're going, but why don't I tell you lovely listeners what we're doing this episode? You all know because you clicks on it. But it's a this, fun series we're starting. Yeah, it's a good good franchise, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put my cards it's, on the table early and say, go on. I was gonna say, well, no, you you can say you you like it, don't you? I'm gonna say this is potentially. There's five of them in the series. We're talking Final Destination, everybody. This is potentially one of my favourite franchises of the. Uh, 2000s, I would say. Probably, if not my favourite, you know, I, I kind of prefer this to, to Scream. I feel like the, each episode entry is a bit more stronger than each of the, the Scream entries and, and some of the other movies that were out in the late 90s and early 2000s. Big fan of Final Destinations. Okay, some of them are a bit weaker towards the end, but... It ha- well, it has the same um, fondness and likeness as the slasher movies, I think, when it came out. <clears throat> because it's like, how are they going to die? And it's figuring out how they're going to die. And I think this works as an overall like umbrella for most horror fans of, you know, oh, I don't like J-horror, but I like only found footage, etc., etc. Because there's a lot of uh, different armies now of subgenres of horror. Um, I think this, though, covers most people probably like it. Even though this first film, even though it came out, was quite a big movie in the cinemas and that stuff. I think um, it, it was quite popular in the mainstream, but I think... You know, people who like other films liked it as well, you know. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think people who don't like horror would also say, if you said to them, if they said, I don't really like horror films, I do like Final Destination, though, because it's quite accessible, isn't it? Yeah, Uh, and and is it because it's an invisible killer? (laughs) Yeah. So we're covering Final Destination 1 from the year 2000 and Final Destination 2 from 2003. We may at some point in the future come back and round up the series with, um, you know, episodes 3, 4 and 5, uh, which we did with Phantasm all in one. We did Phantasm 1 to 5 in one fell swoop. Uh, we also did that with Jules. We did Jules 2, 3 and The Revenge. Alan, um, Alan, as Alan. <clears throat> that is just my sore throat does not give me a good Jesus I like it. My but yeah is my Final author. Destination 1 and 2 so we're going to get into some crazy death scenes very original stuff at the time um, excited to talk about these long time and Stifler. coming Stifler uh, yeah Stifler's in there but that is mum 
Um, well, I'll talk about him when we get to it, but he's one of my favourite characters, actually. I think he, he really, really acts in, in that movie. Um, also, Bill Murray is uh, well, he's in, in an Uber at the moment. I'm not sure. Hopefully, he'll get here on time um, to go through our World of the Strange stuff. He said he's got a big list. I'm not sure what that means, Gav. Okay, a list of what? I People don't he wants to kill? I don't People know. he has killed? Maybe he's doing that thing like Tom Cruise, that movie with Jamie Foxx driving the taxi. Collateral. Or maybe he's like being Santa and he's got a naughty list or a nice list. It could be all sorts of lists. It could be the uh, uh, the list of the children that he's fathered through the sperm donor clinic. Oh, he's just texted me actually. He said it's a shopping list. Oh. oh. But what though? What shop? Sex shop? Uh, yesterday, know. last night, it was really funny. I was I had to work in London. I hate fucking working in London. No offence, London, if you're listening. <laughs> London. London. Um, it's just driving up there. I don't mind going out up for, for a cultural visit, but oh, it's just driving up there and working. Anyway, regardless of that, I was just, just next to the building I had to go, and I had to look on a map on my phone before I went just to see whereabouts in London it was. And it said sack shop. And I was like, sack shop? I was like, have they got that wrong? And go up there, no, it was a sack shop. It's a huge superstore of saxophones. Amazing. And I was like, wow, it is the sack shop. That's amazing. Next door to a sack shop. That could cause some Six great... Sex and sacks. Car- oh, God. <laughs> Can imagine a carry-on movie or a, a Harold, film like that. Harold, go down to the sack shop and get me my favourite saxophone. You can imagine. A, a delivery's just arrived, another load of stock, and they pull out all these dildos. Oh, I don't know how these saxophones are playing. How'd Let me put one in my mouth. <laughs> this one's got a vibrating setting on it. Wow. Um, well, that's that's good to know, Gav, that you, you went to a, near a sax shop. Did you buy a sax? No, but I, I found it comical. It, it was, I find it funny too. Let's talk about sax, baby. <laughs> I actually, I remember doing that, uh, going through lots of different songs or films and things like that, and every time, let's say sex, change it for sax. It's great. I want to sax, sax you up. up. Yeah, brilliant. Well, that's our episode for for, for today. Uh, that's what that's the agenda, as they say. Let's get into some meets and greets. It's our intro. I want to talk to you about some spooky shenanigans before we talk about the films that we've watched since we last, you know, spoke to our audience, our listeners. Um, let's talk about my son and my daughter, Jack and Edith. Now, they say children can see, you know, dead people and all this business. I've got a few stories over the last few weeks. Things are getting a bit strange in my house. Can I, can I, can I suck on his cough sweet a little bit and not talk? And you talk for a moment. Is that what's going to go happen? Is that a euphemism? I don't know, but that's what's happening. Put it in your mouth. It's him. I won't annoy the audience though with doing like sucky sounds. Uh, <laughs> some of them might like it <laughs> some might do and if I do it for long enough it might you know, go off a bang anyway you uh, <laughs> you know me well you carry on or just sit back here right. sucking away. so uh, whether you guys heard it or not I'll just quick quick recap um, I li- I've lived in my house for eight years with my wife and um, we've always felt there was a weird energy around the bottom of the stairs and the hallway uh, specifically like the dining room doors at the bottom of the stairs as well and actually over the last few years we've mentioned to each other my wife and i that sometimes when we cross the landing in the in the, in the in the night when it's dark there's a figure at the bottom of the stairs a shadowy figure sometimes it feels like he's got a very big hat on um or looks like at the corner of your eye you just get this i can't explain it you get this like Im- image it put in your mind when you walk past there it's not every night but just sometimes anyway there was a an incident where my wife had an ai thing on her phone where she can take a picture and then her phone would generate an ai image i think i mentioned to on the podcast that we did this once took a picture of the dining room door and it generated an image of a very tall man in a very big wide brimmed hat um, with almost like one of those um plague masks which is very spooky I should screenshot i know it didn't it couldn't save it the app wouldn't save the picture yeah, it was really screenshot, annoying though i know we didn't think about it at the time and we tried to do it since and it's never really quite done it so that's weird since then i've actually come across a few stories and legends about shadow people and there is a uh, this is basically where you see 
um like figures in the shadows in the corner of your room but it's like in the shape of a human it's a really common thing talked about a lot there's loads of youtube videos about it some people believe it's aliens some watching us like with a cloaking device other people believe it's it's ghosts whatever it is so it's really interesting but then there's a specific one called the Sh- the hat man uh and it's a, a like i've described it's a man in a very big hat usually a top hat or a wide brimmed hat with a very big cloak or it feels like a big energy not necessarily evil anyway the reason i'm telling you all of this is because lately my children have been acting um scared well, not not scared but nervous occasionally or they'll talk about things as children do one of the things they've been talking about is the people so we were playing in the dining room and they both looked around at the dining room door uh and then said oh the people the people they're at the door and i said well there's no one at the door we were expecting someone so i went and had a look at the front door and there was no one there and i said no no one's there yet and they said no the people are at the door and i said look there's no one there and they said no this door and they pointed to the dining room door and said there were people at the dining room door which was a bit spooky Mm -hmm. they often now will talk about the people and sometimes they say things like the people are gone now The people aren't there anymore. The people are a bit noisy. Jack's picked up the phrase, bit noisy, which means basically like I'm a bit overwhelmed and I'm a little bit scared is what that translates to. So sometimes he says the people are a bit noisy. Obviously, me and my wife look at each other a bit like... (laughs) And then lately, bedtime is as it does, is evolved into them sitting in our bed before they go into their own room and us reading books to them. And in our room, they've decided that in the corner up in the ceiling of the room there is a big dog watching us brilliant a big dog watching us in the corner of the room same corner gets mentioned most nights and in their room apparently there is a skeleton in the wall now there is a false wall in their room which covers up like a corner where an old fireplace used to be i do not want to break that wall and find a skeleton in there i do they're telling me there's a skeleton. Well, it's only Edith. Edith, Jack tells me about the dog, and Edith tells me about the skeleton. And they get scared sometimes. And in fact, sometimes there's nightmares, and Edith will wake up saying, the big dog's being noisy. There's no dog. We don't have a dog. None of the neighbours have got dogs. Um, and the other link to aliens and shadow people, and this is the last bit, is, as a lot of people will know, and we covered um, the fourth kind um that movie about alien abduction there's a link between owls and aliens and quite often um and this is before they they became with the movie of the labyrinth which has got an owl in it quite often they'll they'll say <laughs> they'll say there's an owl in the room and i'm like there's no owl in the room they're like yeah the owl's in the room he comes in the room and he comes to see us or something along those lines as a two and a half year old would babble so what i'm trying to say is just to wrap that up with a big bow me and my wife talk about the shadow man the hat man at the bottom of the stairs the kids now talk about the people they never would have heard us talk about that um the people at the door and it's specifically the dining room door and of course there's a dog in my bedroom and a skeleton in the kids room and the owl comes to visit them gav what are your thoughts i don't know um i I think my thought straight away is can sarah and i come down and ghost hunt in your uh, uh house yeah, just sit in the dining room and see what happens. Yeah, no, uh, I'll, I'll discuss that with Sarah. Because, um, absolutely, because we're well up for that. Um, I don't know what to say. You just need to, uh, yeah, do a bit more uh, investigate, I think. A friend of mine has... Um, Have you got to uh, know the history of the house? Uh, it's about 130 years old. I don't know much yeah, I, about it, really. It's it, hard to find out. This is basically the starting of a movie now. Uh, I think you need to go to go to one of those things where you look into it and you get old newspaper clippings. You turn it in the library. And I think you've got to investigate and you're going to find out that something happened Because kids, obviously, and you've had stuff with your kids, kids are in touch with whatever there is. You know, they're still so new to being alive that that if you believe in it they're still potentially partly linked to any any weird other place do you know what i mean where they were before whatever a friend of mine's got a kid uh, who's four now so he's starting to forget forget it but he 
for about a year or so has talked about his other mummy and daddy he lived on an island with another mummy and daddy and his name was simon back then and he said and then it all went dark and i had to i had to swim through dark until i found you mummy oh guys well i don't know i think more like he it's a past life he died and then he's oh, had wow. to like yeah. find his way to his his new womb but as he's become like four and going womb, on to five womb finder womb, womb raider room well, no i don't i don't raiding finding <laughs> room searchers but, um yeah so he's starting to forget all of that now but yeah it's really interesting i'll keep you guys and you gav posted on any developments with my children's psychic abilities <clears throat> yeah and uh yeah i want to see the uh hat man Hat man, hat I man. do not want to see him. Trust me, he's massive. And when he's there, you just go in your bedroom and you shut the door and you go to bed. You don't. <laughs> trust me. Right, I'm going to bed. <laughs> That's kind of what is. I feel like he's. He's not. I don't know if he's looking at me. What is he? What is he? Bedtime monitor. I don't know. I bet he is. He's right outside that door, though. If he is there. Uh, tapping his watch. Thankfully, my wife will be home soon, so that's all good. Well, I'll look after you from here, and the audience can listen to me looking after you from here. Yeah, but it's just you going, oh, Dan, did that move behind you? Uh, yeah. Because I know what you're like. Um, well, <gasps> let's move away from my spooky house, and let's talk about what we've been watching. Gav, is there anything that you want to kick us off with? What have you been Fucking watching? Hell, David Cronenberg's crash. Jesus Christ. Oh, that's a... I saw that once. All I remembered was wound fucking... That is a tough watch. That's all places. I remember of that movie. Uh, so Sarah and I watched it. It's, it's not a very good film. I'm not ever going to watch it again. Um, it's just weird. I don't know why anybody would go, right, so, you know, we could go into production making this film. It's it's a weird one. It's not a happy film, but I don't know. I don't imagine it's supposed to be. I don't know. I don't know what we really say about it. It's, it was quite like, oh, blimey. Um, a, lot, a lot of controversy when that came out in the UK, specifically. It's, yeah, it's just a weird <clears throat> movie. Uh, don't recommend. What have you been watching? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I've watched a lot of new stuff. Um, I watched Orphan First Kill, uh, which came out last year. Um, and, my God, that was amazing. I didn't expect that to... I've heard it was good, but I thought, well, the first one surely is a, like a one-hit wonder, because the first one's really good. But... This one was really good, and there was a great twist it's, in the middle, the some good effects. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <clears throat> it, it's more about the twist and the story in this one, and it's less horror. Not that the first one was even horror, really. It's more of a thriller, I guess. But it's horrific. But yeah, I, I'm not going to say any more. If you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend anybody watch uh, Orphan First Kill. And, and don't worry, it kind of lives up to the to the hype, and is almost as good as the first one. It, just as it takes a very different turn. Really great stuff. Um, and I'll quickly jump in with a, a second one and then we'll come back to you just because I've got half a dozen uh, I also watched one that I know you, I think you've seen it's the, and it's been a long time since I watched a fan footage film that I enjoyed let alone one that really terrified me and me and my wife watched The Deep House oh, fucking God. hell man I was getting really stressed watching that fucking hell I don't even know how they filmed it. Like, what an incredible achievement in filmmaking anyway to yeah. film the underwater, the use of underwater drones and all that stuff. It's just very original for a fine footage film, but also an underwater haunted house. What the fuck? Who came up with that? What a brilliant idea. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that movie. Because everything can float along, you know, and the fact that there's chairs just like floating and... Just a haunted house movie underwater. Oh, it's great. And, and, and like I said, it genuinely really scared me at times. I was I was on the edge of my seat. I, I felt quite stressed on two scenes. My wife was saying to me on the way through, this is the scariest film I've ever seen. But she says that about every film we watch. Um, so, yeah, I highly recommend The Deep Ice, which came out in 21. I know that's a couple of years back now, but I'm late to the party on it. But, um, yeah, it came up on UK Netflix, and I thought, I've got to check it out. Uh, I went to the cinema with my lovely Shara and watched uh, a haunting in Venice. Oh yes, bit of Hercule <clears throat> Poirot. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, it was. It filmed very n like a horror film. There's a lot of wide, uh, very wide lenses, close up at angles and stuff. And it was all in Venice, so it had like a real aesthetic to it, uh, a nice look, a very sort of traditional look. Uh, it was filmed like a horror movie, but it obviously wasn't a horror movie that wasn't their plan it's obviously just 
putting those elements into it because it was filmed like it but it wasn't edited like a horror movie so at times you could be like oh if you'd edited this different it just could be loads of suspense in and there but that's not what they're going for they're going for like a detective film so um but it's nicer if you're going to watch those movies I'd say like Murder and Orient Express is still the best one of the recent ones <clears throat> and then i Death on the Nile is not very good, I don't think. I haven't seen Death on the Nile yet. It's not very good. The, I prefer the original, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, th- this one, Haunted in Venice. It was, it was alright, but it's got seances and stuff, and very traditional, and it's just very filmed very nicely. There's a lot of nice production to it and stuff. So that's where it has uh, good stuff. And it's okay. It's a detective story, though. Right? You know, for Halloween, if you wanted a murder mystery film for Halloween, that would be your go-to, I think. But don't expect... A horror movie but it has got elements kind of creepy sort of mansions and yeah it, well it's all set in one building <clears throat> yeah uh, and as a seance and the, the someone dies so okay. agatha christie absolute queen of that kind of shit you know i often said that she's my favorite author of all time um i love stephen king but agatha christie is the original queen of suspense she knew how to write and okay, there's some slightly racist dialogue in some of her earlier work. It was written a long time ago. But um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Agatha Christie. And I will be checking out Death of the Nile at some point. Because I think Wonder Woman's in that, isn't she? Gal Gadot. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But um, okay, cool. Well, I, I watched, I'll do two more, if that's all right. Um, one that I know you've seen, which I'll very quickly mention because it's not horror, but is again an incredible achievement in filmmaking. Um, Extraction 2. Uh, okay, they're, they're not oners because there's cuts, and if you know st- your stuff like me and Gava and a lot of you guys, you can spot where the edits are. But Sometimes, extra- sometimes extra- they're really good. Extraction 2 is essentially almost like... Th- there's a 25-minute scene. Explain what that is to the audience. Who don't yeah, know so sorry, is. Extraction 1 was Chris Hemsworth, a.k.a. Thor. Um, Netflix film. Being, yeah, these are Netflix movies, but tell, I tell you, they're very good, and the budget on them is... They made me fall back in love with action. These these are the sort of movies we're getting, like John Wicks and stuff. They make me fall back in love with these action movies. And Extraction and Extraction 2 are directed by stuntmen who also operate the camera, so they get involved in it. You know, they're driving the car, they're falling out of the building with Chris Hemsworth and they try and do as many of the the fight scenes and stuff in one take Um, and like I said they very cleverly hide some of the edits there's a 25 minute scene which feels like it's one long take at the beginning of Extraction 2 which starts in a prison with a riot people fighting Chris Hemsworth fights his way out gets in a car they're chased by bikes and quad bikes across a European highway into a factory then onto a train then with helicopters and you just you're trying to catch your breath and it's in- incredible filmmaking and okay it does by the end of the movie it was a bit like the first one I get that but I tell you what if you want to watch a couple of action movies you haven't seen and you want to see something original and I tell you Man Crush on Chris Hemsworth because he could rescue me any day yeah. My God. But when he says, when he winks at the little girl and says, don't worry, I'll take care of you, you think, well, I believe you. Because you can fight off about 20 blokes at once. I bet you would grease yourself up so you couldn't really get grab you. So you'd just be, have to keep grabbing you over and over. Oh, quick. There's only one <laughs> part of me that isn't grease. Popping out his grip the whole time. But yeah, uh, Extraction 2, as good as the first one for me. I'll be going back to those movies. Really love them. The other one I'm going to mention is another Netflix uh, original. Um, and it's a German film which came out in 21. Not many people, if any, have heard of it. It's called Blood Red Sky. You heard of it? Um, it what, the one in the aeroplane? Yes. Yeah, yes. I've seen that. I saw it when it came out. Okay, cool. I was bl- not blown away, but very, very surprised by this. It um mum and daughter yeah passenger 57 meets dust till dawn is all i will say it's a german movie so it's dubbed over there's no way to watch it in its original german language starts in scotland at an airport goes into the air and there's lots of twists and turns in it um just really good um i'm not I, I, it's got a twist in it which i don't want to spoil but if, if you know dust till dawn you might know where i'm going with that really worth a watch and keep, gets you rooting for the for the bad guys to get killed by the even badder guy or woman. Um, whoops. Uh, so that's the other two. Um, I've got one other one to talk about. Have you got anything else? 
Uh, I've been watching lots of Columbo. Oh, I love Columbo. Just one more thing. Just one I more love thing. Columbo. He's my favourite TV detective, as I've, I've often said it. There's something very uh, uh, nice and innocent about Columbo. I know it's dealing with death and that, but there's something like happy with it. It's like very comforting about the show. Don't know why. It's crazy that the networks back then basically allowed them to make these 90 minute they're, they're movies essentially they're, they're all about yeah, an hour to 90 six, minutes six episode a season so that you could because they're that length i presume and they, uh, have, and they it, have to be though to get get that story in the murder mystery you have to do they, that and they don't need a budget a big budget because there's no special effects it's just the dialogue the acting the directing oh, great great actors in them as well you know there's vincent price is one of them you got <clears throat> um uh, you get loads of people in different. Yeah, programs. loads of people pop up, and obviously Peter Falk is incredible. Watched a really good one with Sarah. I was like, oh, can you, do you want to fancy a Columbo? She's like, oh yeah, go on then. And she's watched she's watched some since when she hasn't been me, but it's with Donald Pleasance. Yeah, and yeah. it's a really good episode where he's like he owns like a wine place. Um, it's a really good episode. Um, yeah, there's two episodes. I used to watch that a lot with my mum <laughs> when I was younger. And there's two episodes that I really remember. One was where she kills a man with a lump of ice. And he's in a swimming pool. Oh, and it melts away. And, so. and then melts the ice away. And the other one is where the guy's trained a Doberman to attack if the phone rings and a certain word is said. Oh, nice. I've not got to these up to you. Uh, okay, I won't say any more then. But yeah, I just love the way... Oh, what about the one with Columbo? It, the guy knows Columbo's onto him, so he gives Columbo some jam with poison in it. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Don't... Sh- sh- okay, man. Don't and say... Jesus, there's some... Oh, wow. You're in for I'm some treats. Se- I'm at season three. Yeah, I don't know what season C was. These were. They, they used to get run in the UK in the 80s and 90s, and I just used to watch them with my mum uh, on a Sunday afternoon. They're on Free V. Free V! <clears throat> oh, sweet, man. Sweet. Um, did notice also a friend of mine's in a film coming out soon, which I didn't even know was going on. Now, he didn't, uh, I'm not going to say who, but it doesn't matter. But, um, so yeah, he didn't tell me just in case the studios are listening, or anything, because it, like on IMDb, it's kind of like a. Uh, Saying it and just under wraps what the story is, but apparently it's an essentially a prequel to Rosemary's Baby, mm. which I had no idea is being made, which is interesting. Obviously, you've got that Exorcist movie coming out now, so it must be a resurgence of not remakes, but the, the pre pre makes and prequels and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So it's one of those things you don't know if it's going to be any good or not, or it's what. But I didn't even know that was coming out. Like I had no idea. Not a prequel to Rosie. What would that be? Must be. Well, how would they do that? Is I don't it the know, cult? Would it be not, about the cult? Uh, it must be just yeah, the, how the cult gets formed, possibly. I yeah, guess. and and maybe like all the people in the building and how they all moved into there and sort of yeah. But I, I did say to him, but, but then again, the strikes have just finished. But I did say to him, when's it coming out? And he says he has no idea because of the strikes. Yeah. Uh, but they did come to some agreement yesterday, I think. So um, the longest, I think, this has been ever in Hollywood. Strike. Indeed, indeed. It's affected a lot of films and, and TV oh, shows and, all and the people. the small businesses outside that like, catered yeah. for them and just loads of businesses outside of Hollywood. <sighs> Um, talking of things that are coming out, just for I will mention my other movie in a minute, but I did notice yesterday that they've announced they're making another Halloween film. Not necessarily part four of the trilogy that, that has just come out, but just another Halloween movie. Like, why? Can we just leave it for a bit? It's so weird that no one's jumped on to the next Friday 13th movie because it would be part 13. It's so strange that no one's done it yet. And I, I know it's been tried and they did go, oh, we're going to do a foul footage Friday. Jason, well, he's, Jason's got a camera corner and it's like, that's not going to work. Um, and I know it has been, you know, ideas have come along, but I'm su- so surprised no one's jumped on that. So it, would know, make fr- money. it would make money. Jason is arguably the more marketable of the two. It would because make money. Everyone, everyone knows that hockey mask, you know, yeah. and definitely it would i think we're, we're if, like freddie right. we're not men elm street now it was uh, you know robert england you could still see him as uh his uh personality for it where obviously halloween and uh, uh friday 13th that with the mask obviously yes you could argue so oh that character kane hodder's better than the so-and-so fair enough probably are a bit but at the end of the day you can put someone else with that mask on them and yeah. put that portrait of character where you know didn't go for that so halloween's going out this why, why is friday 13th not maybe we should make it maybe we should friday the 13th part 13 the 13th friday yeah there we go it's weird that you know they haven't done it um 
the last movie I wanted to watch, uh, I wanted to watch the last movie I wanted to mention that I'd watched um, very quickly. Last night I rewatched Ghostbusters Afterlife because uh, 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 uh. that again is it UK Netflix. UK Netflix absolutely killing it right now. There's so much good stuff on there. Um, they yeah. just oh that reminds me the Res- Resident Evil movies just hit it and I thought that was incredible as well. I need to finish watching that. But I was, when I said it, it's shot nice, it's just at times when you have the house outside, it's just like all the colours and stuff and the fog and stuff. It was those sorts of shots were really nice and stuff, you know. I know you say eh about Netflix, but Gav, they are killing it. If you look at what's on there at the moment, there's so much great movie stuff, not just horror, but new stuff's on there. As I said, like Ghostbusters Afterlife, Deep House, Blood Red Sky, Extraction 1 and 2, um, and Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which is another one I want to talk about at a moment with Nicolas Cage, which I absolutely loved. And the reason that they've got better, and this is a bit of a, a rant, so bear with me, is because... What they've, uh, I know it's controversial, but they've stopped people from sharing their accounts because they were bleeding money, Netflix. And I know they've got a lot of money. But since then, apparently, they've made an extra 15 million a year or something like that, um, which isn't really a lot, but it's enough to pump money back into getting the rights to films and newer films. I need to check my, check my membership because the kids have got my account at their house as well. Mm, you won't be able to i don't think you'll be able to share it anymore on different devices like right. it's, it's limited to a, a vpn or something i haven't no, no the kids haven't said anything so oh, no, no 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 we can okay but it's weird mm, okay i did i didn't yeah, realize weird. it happened okay but yeah they so they've stopped that but but they have got really good with what they've got on there. A lot of new stuff, like I mentioned to you. Yeah, that Resident Evil movie, Welcome to Raccoon City. I put that on the other night expecting meh. But I tell you what, I would happily watch that any time. Much better than any of the ones with Mia Yakovich. Because it felt like a yeah. Resident Evil movie. It, yeah, uh, I, I'm going to watch it again. But I was the same. I kind of put it on while I sort of sorting out the flat. Uh, in the same room that is, so I was kind of watching it, but but I didn't think enough of it to go. Oh, I'll wait till this evening and watch this. Do you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I, I'd recommend sitting right. down and watching it in one yeah, go no, because no, no. I might start again. Yeah. I'm I'm a big fan of the first two games. I never really I'm not into it as a lot of people part, are. Part four, is, part four is good. Well, there's Easter eggs in it all the way through from all the games, but I've spotted all the Easter eggs from from Resident Evil One and Two, and I really like the characters and the way they've done it. I like the zombies. I like the, the it was quite scary at times. Again, my wife was watching it with me. She was terrified. Uh, it's just good stuff. The, the, apparently, they, they got the blueprint of the mansion from Capcom. So they recreated the mansion perfectly from the game. You know, and they've got the helicopter crash and all that stuff. And they've got elements of Resident Evil 2 in it. And like I say, all the other movies have got little bits in it. Highly recommend that. But the last one I wanted to talk about, because I've talked about a billion movies. Bloody and we'll get on to it. I know. The last one I wanted to talk about was the unbearable uh, weight of massive talent, which I know some people liked, some people didn't. But that, again, hit UK Netflix recently. It's <gasps> Nicholas Cage as Nicholas Cage. Nick Cage. Oh. Like, very quickly, I had a, uh, uh, sorry, pause, Dan's frozen. Very quickly, very, uh, I was in a shop uh, with um, Sarah's daughter, Ren, and we were uh, doing a quick bit of shopping. I was like, let's go and wheel codes because it's shutting down. Everything's real cheap. Let's get in and have a little look around. So that's what I was doing. And uh, the guy in the checkout just looked so unhappy. Not because I think the store's shutting down. I think he just is unhappy. I was like, oh, what's up, mate? Oh, I'm tired. Didn't sleep well last night. So I said, oh, I was a chat to him. And I was wearing my Wicker Man t-shirt. And he said, oh, that, that's a cool t-shirt. And I was like, yeah, it's Wicker Man. And I was like, I'm on with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, man. Fuck, don't say that. that that's no Edward. Woodward, Woodward, you need, have you seen the original? No, no. I said, you need to get home tonight and watch that and it'll perk you up. It'll make you feel a lot better. Next day, didn't know it was going to happen. I was back in Wilco's. He's there again. I was like, it's me again. It's the Wicker Man guy. And he went, because I was cheering him up. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I haven't watched it yet. It's funny, isn't it? It's the one with the bees. Bees. I was like, yes, it's the bees. Was, <laughs> so I'm in Wilco, just like so check out, just saying the bees. And um, <clears throat> uh, hopefully he's watched it and it, maybe he's happier now. You could, I'm not you, sure you if watching The Wicker Man is going to cheer someone up for that ending. I guess not, but... I, I, it you tried. Me up. Yeah. What, what were you <laughs> saying about Nicolas Cage? And, um, Nicolas Cage. It's a great movie. Um, I thought it was very fun, um, very meta, uh, obviously, because he's playing a version of himself 
Um, and everybody knows the story. You know, he, he gets hired by the CIA to go and become friends with a drug baron on an island who's a big fan of his. And it kind of just they become friends. And then there's lots of sort of do I dob him in or do I stay his friend? It's just, and it's just great. And they, they harken back to a lot of Nicolas Cage movies. There's even a younger version of a minute in his dream. And um, yeah, UK Netflix, we're not endorsed by them in any way, but at the moment, guys, they're killing it. Go on there and check out what's going on. Yeah. That's it from me. Anything more from you? No, let's get on with the show. Let's get this show on the road, baby. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, go with a little trailer, shall we, for... Um, Final destination. I got this feeling. It's a weird feeling. The cabin starts to shake, right? And, and the, the left side blows up, and then the whole plane just explodes. The plane can explode! It's not a joke! It's not a joke! We get thrown off the plane all because Browning has a bad dream? I saw it. The plane! It's gonna blow up! It's gonna blow up! All 287 passengers are feared dead. Because of you, I'm still alive. In death, there are no accidents. No coincidences. And no escapes. Did it happen again? Did you see Todd die? What if it was our time? What if we were not meant to get off that plane? What if there is a design? Then it's not finished. By walking off the plane, you're cheating death. You have to figure out when it's coming back at you. What are you, God, now? He knows which one of us is next. You have a responsibility to tell me. I knew I should have hit on Tammy in the pool that time. I'm not gonna let it happen, okay? Uh, Nobody has control over life and death. Unless they are taking lives. And causing death. Now can you promise me that no one else is going to die? Cool. So that was the trailer. Here is us going into detail on Final Destination from Get the year. In, right in there. Getting in there into the creases for Dino- Final Destination to that from the year 2000. Alex Browning is among a group of high school students on a trip to Europe. He suddenly has a premonition their airplane will crash. He screams to warn the others, but is thrown off the plane. And then the plane crashes after they get off. Dot, dot, dot. Doesn't give you a lot of information, which is cool if you've not seen this. Um, Directed by James Wong. Very fun concept. Very fun concept. And originally it was an X-Files script uh, for an episode of the X-Files. I James Wong. that, um, but makes sense. James Wong also directed several episodes of the X-Files. And when you know that, you kind of see it because actually... The way it's shot, um, even the colouring, the colour palette, the clothing, something about it does sort of speak X-Files from around the mid- late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, not a bad thing. It, it, um, it's, got, it's kind of like, uh, not like m- crazy cinema quality, but it's it's like good TV movies. Like X-Files were really well-produced films. I was, I was so surprised. With X Files episodes, I've I think I've even messaged you or Sarah before, I've just been like, oh, I've just seen the boom mic, only like twice in all the episodes. You see a look because their production's so tight, it's Very so good. good. Yeah, and um, so that sort of stuff sticks out when you see it. And uh, yeah, this is very much like it in that sort of vein. Like it's not crazy over the top, but it's definitely big enough. And the concept is such a great trailer fodder that would have got people in cinemas. And I, I saw it uh, around a guy called Ken's house who uh, I think joined the military in a place called Denmark Square. That's all I could tell. I saw it at the cinema. Um, 
think on a date and i went back to watch it again probably a week later really liked it because you get a hand job on the first date so you couldn't concentrate (laughs) <laughs> uh, I was la- back then. I was lapping up any horror I could get in the cinema. So, yeah, and I had disposable income, and I was lapping up popcorn. But I wasn't putting holes in the bottom of popcorn. If that's where you're going, that's, um, I wasn't going there. But yeah, but- I think what they've done with their budget is great because they've cast basically people you don't really know, <laughs> other than a little cameo from Tony Todd, who's great, and. Yeah, okay, maybe um, Ali Larter, um, who plays Clear Rivers, and Stifler, who wanted a chance to do something other than play Stifler, and I think he's incredible in this. Um, So they've saved their budget for the deaths, which is what this is about, you know, the deaths and the death scenes. And they're not exactly like blowing, blowing you out the water with the death scenes, but the plane explosion's good some of the beheadings and although there's some cgi and it's early cgi as well but it looks great they've done it they've used it sparingly and there's some good practical effects as well um so their budget was retained for for the deaths and then they cast a lot of unknowns who are for the most part pretty good and they're characters that you kind of a lot of them have got st- an arc, you know. You've got the, the dickhead who's a bit of a drinker, well, and then well, you get, by the you, end of it, he's all right, you, you know. you got to get your cliches, almost your slasher trope, but almost like it's a group of different people. And you need it as well, because if you have a, the, yeah, yeah, commodity of your, for your film is literally just like uh, death is coming to get people. We want to see death getting people. So you need a few people to say so you can kill them off. Yeah, and there's a good... I think there's seven of them that get off the plane, so we know that we're going to get at least six deaths with, if there's only one surviving. Obviously, there's a few survivors, which most people have seen this, so spoilers are coming. But, um, but yeah, and... Um, I, it's just... I really, really enjoy this movie. I love the characters. I love the deaths. Uh, and I really like the second one, which we'll get to as well. It's just got it all for me in this one, really. Um, great concept. Didn't see any of it come in. Made me jump twice at the cinema. Didn't make me jump since because, you know, obviously I've seen it a billion times now. But just just good, good, good stuff. And, God, this movie screams 2000. The soundtrack, all the songs on the soundtrack. Oh, are just yeah. so, They're just so early 2000s pop You're just rock like expecting and, Limp Bizkit to pop up. Yeah. Know? Dido, you know, you want all these sort of artists in there. Um, but, yeah, it's great. So that's my kind of overall on it and i guess we'll just dive on in shall we well it's 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 for me it's a kind of not as much i'd actually probably go to the what the other one i'm gonna say more but it's kind of reminds me of the paranormal activity series like they're they're all sort of fairly enjoyable and you can sort of duck in at any of them if you want really yeah and just just sit there and watch one because you know what you're getting. And this is great though because like you always got the big openings for the uh, different films, and you got Tony Todd at least being a uh, presence, which is a link to them. Um, but yeah, it's it is quite a fun film series. And and this is also a fun one because you know a good one to watch with a group of people because some of the deaths are literally like Way! when someone dies, you know, because it's some of them are quite big and epic. Um, talking about like a bus, for example. So there's some good stuff in this, and um, it made you paranoid. Makes everyone paranoid. These movies, you know, because you come out of them thinking, what if I tripped over this and then that fell over there and then that landed on that flip that up stoners? in the air? Any stoners uh, play character stoners in any of the film series? Because that I, must I, be the worst I, fucking high. Just I the think paranoia. As, as close as we get in this one is probably Stifler. He's not a stoner, but he's quite dopey at times the good thing i would he's say a, he's also, a whiny bitch james wong obviously loves his horror movies because all the characters are named after people who are prominent in horror yeah so you've got um i won't say all their full names but their surnames are browning as in todd browning you've got um billy hitchcock agent shrek um you, you know they're all named after people there's terry cheney and then in the second one you've got the carpenter family obviously john carpenter and a few other ones so they did this thing where they sort of and Gosh. there's a lot of the good thing as well the last thing i'll say before we get into it is having owned this on dvd back in the day still got it somewhere with all the easter eggs so all the way through there's clues so this movie is great for a rewatch or a third or fourth watch if you know what's happening because if you look there's clues 
everyone not only do the characters spot clues which are you know obviously they're scripted for them to spot but us the audience can spot little clues here and there you know a skull here a train toy train there a toy playing there there's all these little things and even things like um 666 appearing somewhere or uh, john denver plays the john denver famously died in well, a plane we're crash get, we're get, we're get into it yeah, I'm, I'm just going to say that there's loads of little clues and stuff and little nods to other horror movies as well. So Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good stuff. And uh, not homage, wouldn't it? It'd be like a... Uh, uh, just uh, an Easter egg, really. No, uh, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Right, anyway. Whatever. Let's do it. So we kick off with a good score. Great little score, very x files as the credits roll. Um, and again, there's loads of clues in this opening montage of things that may or may not happen. They're all probably going to happen. And we meet stan it, it, but basically here we have like this info dump of this kid and his family and the dynamic well he's not called stan i say that because devon sawyer who plays alex our main character played stan in the m&m music video stan so oh, that was what, he? no, what he's very realize. famous for um then he got cast in this so um i oh, always okay. see him and think of dear stan but yes we meet alex a very superstitious 17 year old um and he is about to go to paris now instantly you and i are reminded of our favorite werewolf movie oh yes indeedy <laughs> oh uh, there is a little bit of an element of american werewolf in paris in a bunch of americans going off to europe they're all very excited they're all I know. a bit I've full of that before you know, I just young, love dumb, it if they, like, at the airport they bump into those guys and then we just could just turn on America of Paris and it's them at the beginning bumping into those guys then carrying on we could have this link uh, through all films it'd be like the Marvel Universe but but smaller but the, 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 the Paris Universe and they just all go to Paris and get eaten by werewolves um, yeah, C- little CGI thing. ones got to be real bad CGI ones but that's because I, I love them we we he gets to the airport so we, we you know he pretty much goes there straight away and he meets his classmates some of them are friends some of them are not it's the usual thing um he's got a buddy called carter um, well carter's a bit of a bully but he's got a buddy called todd there's billy hitchcock who's played by stifler who i think is so good i've said it several times yeah, but I think he's, he's good. so yeah. good in this really like although he's a bit of a dope he really like comes across as such a genuinely sweet kid in this you know it's so different from stifler who's just this horrible horrible person um and stifler obviously is quite funny we got yeah well he's my favorite character in those movies um claire rivers played by ali larter she's going to be one of our sort of main characters so they all meet at the airport and everybody starts sort of chatting um there's lots of clues again i'm not going to keep going on about them john denver playing all that kind of stuff and they get on the plane so they're off to the premises they're all off to france because they're learning french they've got a, a french french teacher before he gets uh, on it what was the thing of him uh, when he looked up at the gate uh, the boarding gate it was opening and closing they made a quite, a quite a dramatic thing that doesn't that didn't actually really come into play obviously he's going to get an airplane but that doesn't actually come to play that that I don't he, know why. he's paranoid he's paranoid and so when things aren't working smoothly like, and that was like taking ages he thinks, to go, it's, <laughs> he thinks it's a, uh, a a key or an indication of something bad he just is worried i think he's always had this premise of um <laughs> i'm a sus- i'm a little bit suspicious if things aren't running smoothly and it, it plays out when he has the vision in a minute on the plane i think I think that's my, that's for me. That's the backstory I've made up. Is that he's always had a little bit of a a vibe, like a psychic vibe. It's probably, he probably didn't like it then when his teacher is told by a Harry Krishna, like uh, it's not the end, and gives yeah. him a pamphlet and stuff. Probably didn't make it much better. And it's funny his birthday though is the same as the departure time. He's like because the guy's like, oh, that's interesting. Your birthday's the same time as the departure time. Yeah, and that is a weird like those sort of coincidences are things you think, oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. Um, his buddy says to him, "Let's go take a shit." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they go because you don't want to. Because if you fancy that girl and you want to try and pull that girl on the airplane, you don't want to be shitting and the smell of shit. 
<laughs> you know, it goes out he into said, the airplane. Do you really want her to? He's Be talking about her, the hot girl. Do you really want her to associate you with that smell that gets in the back of your throat and makes your eyes water a bit? Fucking and he's airplanes. like, okay, let's go and take a shit together. And that's where they hear John Denver playing on the radio. And they're like, oh, John Denver, he died in a plane crash. And so Alex is starting to think, hang on a minute. There's a lot of weird things I'm seeing here. And now, and now when I'm trying to take a shit, John Denver's playing as well. This is... At this, this point here, very- I'd forgotten it, this was next one's episode. I did actually think that uh, uh, this would remain a good Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, it's definitely got that kind of... I mean, the, the fact they turned it into a 90-minute movie without it becoming boring in any way is a testament, really. Um... Well, they get on the plane, don't they, Gav? Um, they do. Um, uh, I've got a little icon just coming up soon. I've never, ever had a little icon in my notes. And it's an aer- a little aeroplane going off. Oh, wow. You've drawn a little... Can, I you, can you show it. me? Okay. You... Uh, I can try. Looking uh, forward to this, drawing of an aeroplane. Well, I didn't draw it. Uh... Oh, no. This is too hard, dude. No, don't worry about it. I believe you. Oh, my note's vanished. That's why. Okay. Well, anyway, you've got an icon of an aeroplane. Did you? So that just appeared on your tablet. Yeah, I wrote it and it popped up instead. Um, it's not worth how much long this is taking to talk about it. That's for sure. <laughs> Sorry, listeners. I really am apologising. Anyway, we, they get we do on the know plane. what we're doing. It's almost ten years we've been doing this. Like they get on the months. plane. Yes, and everybody starts getting in their seats, and there are, some of them are nervous, some of them are not, some of them are excited. He's they asked wanna... to trade seats, isn't he? Yeah, he asked to trade seats, to... and he wants to sit next to the hot girl, but the hot girl wants to sit with that, her good well, friend. Well, explain this better. Our, our man, our lead man who has a premonition, he's just like, oh, I'll sit down, oh, I'm going to die. And this girl sits next to him. Her friend, his friend, wants to get with but she says, comes up to him and says, can you trade seats, go sit with your buddy so I can sit with my buddy? And he just goes, yeah. And his friend's like, oh, what? Like, I thought I was going to sit with her and I could pull her. So so he's basically moved seats from the seat he was supposed to sit in. And this is cheating death. Yeah, and that's really cool because it's a very... It's not something you really think about, really, until it comes up later in the movie when he's trying to figure out death's plan, death's design. Because essentially, dear listeners, everyone dies in the order they would have died on the plane. His kindness, ladies and gentlemen, for moving uh, 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 to another seat was uh, rewarded with uh, not dying. So remember that. Be kind. So he sits down in this new seat and then he realises that the little knob that you turn to bring the table down breaks off and he thinks, oh, hang on a minute, this plane doesn't seem safe. I've not mentioned anything to do with knob turning. The plane starts to take off. There's a really great suspense orchestration or score here. Uh, it's really good. Uh, I was quite impressed with the music throughout this film, actually. It was, uh, like I said, like a higher production than that. You know, it's probably an orchestra. I don't think it was samples. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, the plane takes off. Um, there's a bit of turbulence and it carries on. A bit more turbulence. And then the turbulence really kicks in. Everyone starts panicking a bit. Gas masks pop down. Um, the oxygen masks, not the gas masks. And all of a sudden, there's an explosion on one of the wings. Then sparks flying, things flying all over the place within the plane. Then half the one side of the plane rips off. It's not good. Students are sucked out. The teacher's trying to help. Well, she's trying to hold. Oh, no, hang on, hold on. She's gone. Loads of people sucked out the plane. And then the last thing we see is a fiery explosion and Alex, our main character, melting in flaming death on a plane. Yeah, everyone's been sucked out. That's, sounds weird. Um, yeah, sucked it's off, just... Sucked out. Sucked out. Uh, I don't know what sucked out is, but that sounds, doesn't sound good. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, people burning, you look at them, they're actually on fire, and it's just like, what the shit? And the dude's just looking around and go, whoa, and then just wakes up. And then he wakes up. And he's like, and he, oh my god, you imagine he, that though? He's just he like, does, it, is it the mushrooms I took, like, yesterday? Is, are they kicked in still? So he doesn't necessarily wake up, does he? But it's like, he's had this, like, daydream, like a, it was like a split second, but it felt like, you know, like a dream lasts a lot longer than it actually is. Yeah. And he, he's kind of, he's sweating and he thinks what the fuck I've just dreamt that everyone on this plane died he uh, obviously as you can imagine listeners freaks the fuck out well then deja vu starts happening because then will you trade seats 
he gets up, then the knob comes off, then he's looking around and everyone's saying the same things they were in his so vision. it's too much. I think if he gets to, like, three of something, uh, 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 that's the magic number, at that point you're like, no, nah, this is this is two coincidence, maybe. Three? No, no, no. So he gets up. He's removed from the plane. He, well, he said, but he's removed because he says something you probably shouldn't say on a plane, which is, this plane's going to explode. Everyone's yeah. going to die. <laughs> not, not nowadays, that's for sure. This was before 9-11, and he's getting kicked off. If you even stood up and said, if you you probably got shot since 9-11 yeah. for saying that. Um, so he's he's removed off the plane. It, him saying that causes a bit of a fight between the bully who not punches him. So him and his girlfriend, um, ba- one of the teachers, well, both teachers, but then one of them goes back on. So they're all removed off the plane and held in the airport. And the French teacher, the one who's actually French, says, I'll get on the plane and I'll go to Paris because I am French and, I, you know, one of us has and, got to go and, with the kids. And they tell them to get onto a, a late, they have to get on a later flight, basically, that you tell them. Yeah. Um, and and they're, obviously they're, they're, they're asked to leave because he's freaking out and they need to get going, I suppose, as the times they've got to get going. Because I was wondering, because they just say, oh, you have to get a later one. So it's not, it's just because he's freaking out is the reason they get him off. And unfortunately, other people who just be standing in the uh, the gangway as he's walking, they're being pulled out, kind get stuck in it so we have this group uh yeah uh, you know still land on land it's definitely a bit more of them because he's a bit late and then he's like he's trying to get to his seat and then he ends up just getting pushed off the plane so he's like, it's oh, man, I don't want to be here what am I be here for so they sit and dine and they say you know there's a bit more of a tussle between um uh what's his name <sighs> of carter and alex because carter's really annoyed he wants to go to paris and alex says well look this is what happened i just had a vision that the plane exploded and i can't explain it I, all i know is is that i got off even ali larter clear rivers her character's name gets off she doesn't know any of them but she says yeah she what she sort of getting off and she's just like kind of she's, like, not, she's, she's got the same vibe she definitely thinking, like lights incense at home she's that sort of person yeah, yeah. And does yoga and likes flowers. Um, not saying nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that's what I've. She's very natural, and she just sees that and she's like, I think that that kid knows what he's talking about. And there's this great up. shot where um, Stifford is looking out the the window of the um, the airport, and he he sees the plane go by, and it's very it's like the omen here because as the plane goes by, the trail sort of cuts yeah. across his neck. It's just like oh, oh yeah, very nice. No, I didn't know. And that. he says he says there they go, <gasps> and here, here we, we stay, here we stay, and then and then a yeah. little flash in the sky. It's really nice then, because you've got the the distance of sound travelling. Yeah, it's th- and this is the budget. So a tiny flash in the sky, and then Stifler turns around. And he's oh my god! And then all the windows blow out, and the plane Explosion. just explodes, and it rains down l- thousands of fiery balls. It's really well done for like the time. Really good plane explosion for you the know. time, you know, because obviously it, this is like CGI. But yeah, it's a good call to do like a small plane from a distance sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's good. And everybody They're in shock. looks at. They all look at Alex basically as in like your thought would be fuck i was about to die oh my god and then all of a sudden it's gonna change to how the fuck did he know that and it's gonna be like what the shit and then it's just that's, that's a range of emotions you could be dealing with there yeah because they're all scared of him they're angry with him they're suspicious but they're also grateful as you know it's be. like it's, and confused, ultimately. Um, yeah. And then you start thinking about all your mates that were on the plane that died, just died, including the trauma his buddy. Be hard. His buddy Todd, his brother was on the plane, so Todd's <sighs> lost his brother. So you got well, all that's about to kick in soon with the grief. Um, so the feds show up. Yeah, interrogation. And, uh, they start questioning them. You said just before you got off the plane that this plane was going to explode. Why did you say that? How did you know? And obviously, they think there's potential terrorism or, or, or something. They're just doing these two FBI guys. On a side note, are fantastic. Um, they've got like a bit of banter between them. That, that kid gives me the creeps, but you give me the creeps. Do you know they're they're? Not, they're not very threatening, are they? Because one of one of them is like, I think I kind of believe him. You know, he's kind of like fucking Mulder. They're quite funny, though. What was the movie we watched where the two uh, FBI guys were talking about coffee or something, you know? What was that one where they were like, 
Uh, I like coffee. Yeah, you, the best coffee it's in a, town. And it's a massive coffee discussion. Yeah, I can't remember what, but yeah, it's a big, that, big coffee discussion going on quite a lot. Yeah. So why yeah. talk about coffee so much? And that, that's like these two guys. They're just like there's a bit of backstory with them. I, I, I quite like that. I did, I did watch, need I did, to do that. I did watch Ten to Midnight again not long ago, and I quite enjoyed uh, talking it's about his quiche. It up. Yeah, no, I mean, he's really pissed off that he bought quiche, and it, it's like. <laughs> You've said quiche at least three or four times now. I don't know why this is such a, a thing. Why are we still filming this? It's really weird. <laughs> well, Alex gets grilled. Um, Todd obviously is crying because his brother was on the plane. Everybody's very upset. The grief starts to set in. Finally, they allow their parents and family in to the room. Why? Um, every- Go on. Is it only him that cheats death why is it only him that can do this it was only supposed to be him the other people just got do you know what i mean if it's up to him he would have been in that seat but me have been at home no no one else affected do you know what i mean why uh... as i've explained i believe he has always been slightly in tune just with him. this kind of stuff yeah because no others... not not just him because claire rivers she senses these things as as it's discovered more and more and then in the second one as well so he says you've got to open yourself up that, to the so signs you, that, that the world presents you well, so you think that these other people were destined to have death as well but they death knew that uh well not death didn't know because death had been pissed off if death and death would have stopped him doing that and made him stay in that seat so whatever death, it death is, thought he was wiping out 130 people there so, and done so and what, dusted. whatever it is it's not death I don't, what do we call it his his lucky bastardness i don't know his okay. four leaf clover i don't know uh, it, it must have known like oh okay actually we can save a few more but why save these ones what what I, psychic you know what I mean? psychic intuition well it's just it's just luck like you said some it, of them were it's stuck just in a the... movie and there's no reason for it at all and i'm well, just getting into it just... too much well, it's just luck. Uh, but yes, it is just a movie. They needed six or seven deaths, so six or seven people get just, moved off the, yeah. off the plane. I was just but wondering. Cause, like, it is, it's really... just luck. It's all luck and it's all fate, because Tony Todd goes into this a little bit when we meet him. So it's all luck and it's all fate. He's always had a slight psychic intuition, I think, yeah. and he, he basically he starts teaching them, you know, to look out for these signs that he's always seen, and other people think he's paranoid, and other, and if you open your eyes, like I talked about my kids in the intro, you, sometimes if you, pe- more people are, more, some people are more open to these, these signs, and these, these supernatural things, if you believe in them or not, yeah. and I think it's just luck or fate that these people came off but death obviously is like well actually that's not my plan my plan was to wipe you lot all out so i'm gonna have to come back and get you all individually now um but again it's just a fucking movie as well you're right yeah, so. yeah that's the thing <laughs> I, 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 you know we can review it and really get in depth. it could be really wanky and get really in depth with any fucking movie oh i see the passion in here and it's symbolism of christianity or some shit you what's know, really it's... good here with the parents turning up is um, we get a little snippet of family life for each of them, just for a split second. So yeah, you get yeah. to see some of them are coming from money, some of them aren't. Claire Rivers has no one show up for her. It's it's quite nice getting to know the characters, so you start to feel a bit more uh, uh, at home uh, when it flips from one story to the next story. Uh, 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 not story, but next other person. When it flips from one house to the next, what's going on and stuff. Uh, you start to get to feel quite used to them and i uh, feel quite at home with them if that makes sense yeah yeah and like i say claire's got no family so she ends up getting a lift home from alex and his dad and they all go home to their own families and it's all over the news it's all that's anything that's on the tv now and then we get a series of a montage of news reports telling us there were no survivors but news reports that seven people did get taken off the plane just before it exploded. We'll give, give you more on this when we hear it. Um, and then we cut to 31 days later. Um, is this like the memorial? This is the funeral, yeah. Funeral. Uh, like the memorial or whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> and the reason it's 31 days later is because 31 classmates and, and the teacher died so they wanted to mark the 31 by doing this 31 days later so they all stand up and they read things out and everyone's very sad and they erected a big um memorial uh, yes i said erected you did and obviously uh alex is probably feeling a bit like <sighs> you know 
Well, Alex is not allowed to see his buddy Todd because Todd's dad has forbidden it because he's they're kind of basically scared of Alex because Alex was the one that started this on you know almost predicted it so him and his buddy there's a really sweet scene where they stand next to each other and he says i miss you and he says i miss you too but my dad just won't let me see you at the moment i'm really sorry and then he says i've got to go up and read this out for my brother it says how i feel and it's so sad because he's like i've got to go up and read this little poem out about my because my brother died you know and it's they're all really sad and that bully carter sort of says to him i hope you don't think i owe you for anything because I don't, I control my own destiny. Okay, uh, it's, it's nothing to do with you. You, you didn't save me, you know. I, I'm I'm in charge of my own life, and he's clearly got a, a booze problem. At, you know, at 17, he's, he's drinking loads of Jack Daniel, probably drink driving. So we get again little snippets of backstory with all these characters, and Claire's there, and the FBI are there. They're still watching Alex. Yeah, they are, aren't they? They're, they're not there for any other reason. They're here because it's a bit like, why the fuck? How does a kid know this stuff? Um, <clears throat> but how long do you watch him for? Or I suppose you're not. I suppose maybe because that's a significant thing. Go see his reactions. Yeah. Uh, and just uh, try <clears throat> and judge it, I guess. Sean William Scott's really sweet. He says to him, hey, uh, if I ask out um, Mary to the on a date would she say yeah and he's like i don't know and he's like okay well he starts asking him he's like i can't predict all these things oh he thinks he's brilliant he's like i I only saw a vision of the plane exploding i I know nothing more about what's going on in our future um and then the only person that seems grateful is claire She, she says to him because of you i'm still alive i can't thank you enough you're like you're you know no one else wants to speak to you but if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. And, and it must be I, so I, weird for him. Imagine if he, you, you, you listener, imagine if you could predict, you predicted like this major event. It's been like, what? How weird you would feel from that? You it know? is weird. Uh, we go back to houses now, don't we? And there's a very giallo style film camera movement going along. Uh, and it's quite hard to talk about things like this when you're on a podcast. But it's just really flown camera. And I was like, oh, it's very giallo. It moves all around the apartment. Yeah, it's uh, it flows around. It's showing us we feel everything like we're because being... we know one of these things. We got to guess what is going to be the deaf instrument, uh, and it shows us everything there, almost yeah. like a detective show or sort of thing. But it reminded me of old school Giallo movies where the camera just pans slowly along everything. And it's almost a bit, almost a bit like a POV of of this entity of this of death as well, isn't it? Because you're sort of swimming around the house, going towards it. So we get we're in Todd's house. This is Alex's best mate who lost his brother. So since losing his brother in the airplane disaster, his dad's become incredibly depressed. Yeah. And there's lots of issues in the family life. Todd's obviously a bit down in the dumps. He lost his brother. He's in the bathroom. He has a start to have a little shave, so we're thinking. It's, it's oh. like this chain reaction, isn't it? You're thinking ra- razor blade? No, okay, okay. Then he puts the tweezers up his nose. And you're thinking, oh my god, what's what's going to happen? Because as he's putting the tweezers up his nose, all this water starts leaking out the toilet, and you think if he slips on that, he's going to stab himself in the brain. And there's loads of things that happen. And music is really suspenseful, and it keeps building up to each one of these things, and it's constantly on a up uphill build up, and it's so good. I'm so impressed by the music. All of those things that happen in the bathroom, the one thing that we weren't expecting is him to slip on the water. We see it's like an evil premise, like Michael Myers, basically. This water, close up this water, just going like, which way should I go? Oh, I'll go along the grout of between this tile. Oh, I'll go along this white grout of between this tile. Oh, I'll go this way. Go left, go right. And we're like, oh, fuck, it's water. And the way it creeps up reminded me of Michael Myers. <laughs> well todd slips on this water falls into the bath the cord wraps around his neck from the bath cur- the shower curtain um and it's a really brutal strangulation because his, his eyeballs rupture so they all turn but they turn bright red he's trying to reach the scissors that he was earlier using to cut na- nasal hair and can't reach them and his toes curl up and he's clawing at his own neck to try and get the cord off and then he just dies and that's our first death, other than all the people on the plane. That's our first death of the survivors. So he's dead. While that's happening, his buddy, Alex, is doing his research. He's been frantically like... And, of course, the FBI, if they look at his 
um, internet history. They're going to see he's been researching plane crashes, the blueprints of different planes, how, you know, different planes can explode. What an idiot. They're going to... But he doesn't know that because it's the year 2000. I presume they're thinking terrorist... Oh, like, like some sort of uh, terrorism or like something like that. I know it's pre-9-11, um, but still... Yeah. A thing to be watched at the time. Hmm. Yes, it's a. Uh, so he dies, and as he dies, we should also mention that while Alex is doing his research, an owl hits his window. Now, now an owl is a symbol of death. Some people believe, or a bird flying in your house, and this makes him throw a paper, a newspaper, which hits uh, a fan, which gets shreds the paper, and the word Todd lands on the desk, and he's like. There's a sign. I better go and check if Todd's all right. He gets to Todd's house and his body's been wheeled out on a stretcher. Yeah. And obviously the FBI are like, why are you here? And his dad blames him for his death. Yep. He said, because of you, my son killed himself. Yeah, because that's what happened. Wow. (laughs) So it looks like he killed himself. So death's very clever. It's made it look like an accident because that's what death does. And the music is still like very, very suspenseful. It's such a good score. I can't can't say that enough. The water, by the way, the toilet water also sucks back in after it's done its deed, doesn't it? The score is on Spotify if anyone wants to listen to it. It's a very good score. Mm. I listened to it while I was doing some work. Yeah, it's already it's one of those ones you pop on in the background, and especially in October, I love listening to Halloween um, horror movie scores what in October. You, what did you just say a minute ago? Uh, the toilet water goes creeps back into the toilet. Yeah, like it, like the uh, the killer, you know, going back again. Yep. Like Michael Myers going back in the hedge. So Alex speaks oh, to no, clear. That's the Simpson, isn't it? <laughs> Alex speaks to clear about his his clue, his Todd clue, and she says, well, you know, why don't we go and uh, have a look at his body? Yeah, because that's going to do what? Okay. Uh, I don't really want to do that, but let's do that. Before that, though, she also shows him her sculptures. What do you think about her her, her, her metal sculpture? I didn't, oh, man, I didn't fucking know them. I wish I had that. Uh, what were they? It was just this crazy blows of metal. And she's like, this is how you make me feel. Fuck and he's like, off. Well, I'm sorry that I make you feel this way. And she's like, no, it's a good thing. You don't know what you are. Just like this thing doesn't know what it is. Fuck All off. it is. Yeah. I, cow. Yeah. Well, anyway, she, he says, she says, look, I've also been getting this feeling in my stomach as well. And I've been seeing or feeling signs. Why don't we go to the mortuary and see Todd again. What for? Because they want us. They want to see him. What for? So they break in to the mortuary. She land. They land in a coffin, and she turns around and she says, "This is kind of hot." She's getting turned on, breaking into a mortuary. There's so many flags for this girl, even though she's not seems innocent. There's some flags going on. I've, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, Sarah, Ali Sarah would probably break into a morgue. Ali Larter is kind of hot as well. <laughs> Um, but still, I don't know. Anyway, they, they they sneak in into the actual room. They see his body lying there. But lo and behold, here's Tony Todd. Uh, and Todd's arm does actually move with chemicals, and, and which makes Tony Todd come out and says, Oh, sometimes that happens. Okay, Tony Todd. That's the bit. That's one of the bits that really made me jump in the cinema when the dead body's arm moves. I don't know why, it just flicked up and it made me jump. Sometimes the chemicals make it happen. Tony Todd goes to explain, hey, I'm here now for all of the movies. Now, for the record, Tony Todd isn't death, although he seems to be, know an awful lot about death's design. But, um, yeah, he just shows up and just sort of says to them... What's he doing well, in his spare time when he's at the morgue? Then I'm going to work out... To- Is this what he thinks about when he's doing it all the time? I figured out there's a thing called, I call it, death's design. Yeah. Because okay. he explains, basically, death has a plan. I've worked it out as a plan for everyone. And the rest of you are all all on the list. And uh, you're all going to get crossed off the list one way or another. Just I, because I, you I like avoided the, the plane crash. Yeah, yeah. He's, in, he's an incredible horror icon. And, yeah, hell of a voice. Uh, but also, he's a lot of fun, his character. Because he, he has no qualms about... 
you know, shoving a needle in the, their dead friend's neck in front of them and all this kind of stuff he's doing. It's he, just, he's, not, he's not your typical, he's got a sandwich and he's just going to leave it on the stomach while he's eating. I can't um, just that was my lunch. Well, you can see here, the head was shattered uh, from, the, from this bit down here. Brain dead. I absolutely love that disgusting scene where he's like you put too much inside of it and the body's like filling up with the uh the liquid that they- oh it's great i've seen brain dead for a long time because it's quite a uh effects heavy film i don't know if i'm gonna be grossed out about it now it's funny really i don't know why it's so funny i love uh, it uh, I love brain it. dead uh, i'm thinking of um no yes brain dead brain dead yes. <laughs> Yeah, so there's Tony Todd. He's got some great lines, things like, shh, you'll wake the dead, and all this kind of stuff. He talks about death design. So he sets the ball rolling a bit more on their their, their ideas about what, what could be going on. He says, death's probably got a new design for all of you now. You're all on the list. So as they leave, he turns to them and he says, Alex, I'll see you soon. And it's just a great line. Yeah, that was quite a good voice. Uh, he just says, just, oh, just open yourself up. Uh, to the signs and you'll see death design what anyone could just do this at any point yeah like I said you, you just got to be open to it we're all you open gotta, to it Dan you got to be yeah but what about death design well we get one of my favourite scenes next um so Nine by, Inch Nails on the soundtrack so you yeah, know, you know in the late 90s early 2000s and it's the morning Claire and Alex are having a coffee and they're discussing this what it's happened in the, in the night it's definitely gets run over in the background it's just a happenstance they all seem to be there and this is Death's plan he's trying to get them all in the same place so that I'm something... going to get them all in the same place and I'm going to kill them all at once so Stifler's almost run over by Carter and his girlfriend Terry and then the teacher's <laughs> then there the as teacher's well the teacher's there what the fuck come on but it's great come on Gav it's great it's good stuff it's so, only a movie it's only uh, a movie while they're talking um, they see a bus in the reflection behind them and then they turn around there isn't a bus there so there's another sign <gasps> something's going to happen. happen they all start arguing and basically Terry says Terry, the girl, she says to her boyfriend, Todd, um, Carter, look, you can either keep on beating the shit out of him every time you see him, but if you want to do that, then you can do it on your own. As far as I'm concerned, you can just drop fucking dead. Oh, I think that's uh, a cue point. And as she steps backwards, as she says, drop fucking dead, a bus completely takes her out. It's a great effect. You don't need to see anything because it happens so fast. They all just get, it's about the after effect. They all get completely splashed with blood. Yep. And if you look, the blood forms a number seven on Alex's cheek because they're the seven survivors. Cheeky. Um, So... There's another one dead now, Terry. And, of course, Alex was there. Um, so the, the FBI are now thinking, well, that's two of these survivors. And Alex was at both locations. Hmm. Hmm. So Alex is sat there very depressed in front of the news. Yep. And uh, he explains, he's explaining, uh, the news starts to explain, th- we think, this is what happened on the plane. There was a fault here, and the fire went from here to here, and taking up this, this, and this. And he's looking at that, thinking, "Hang on a minute, that looks familiar to the seating." So he goes upstairs with his crazy blueprint, his Charlie from um, "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia" board on the wall with wires and things everywhere, and he works out we're being killed in the order that we would have died on the plane as the explosion would have happened. He's figured it out. Ooh. And he says, that means our teacher, Miss Luton, is next. Yep. And this is a great... This is like Mousetrap, her death, isn't it? Fucking hell. Well, we, well, we see your buddy, don't we? You see, like, in a, a place, in the kettle, there's a, there's a dark shape behind. Oh, yeah. She sees something. And she's just... Like I said, it's like... The, the game mouse trap, you know, because one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. So she imagine mouse trap is a horror movie. <clears throat> Fucking well good. They would be good. I guess we it, see um, kind of thirty one, I suppose. It'd be like Saul, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah. So I don't care now. <laughs> there's knives in her house. There's a, a very old computer. There's loads of stuff. And essentially, what she does is she puts, she makes a hot, um, a hot cup of tea throws it away because she freaks out 
Then she puts some ice in the mug, which causes the mug to crack. Then she pours some vodka in the mug. Because there's a crack, the vodka starts dripping out of the mug. She drops some vodka unbeknownst to her in the back of the t- the computer, which starts to spark. This causes an explosion, some life, Imagine some glasses in her neck. Imagine just working all this out in the, like, the writer's room. So this is what I'm going to do now. You know, it'd be, be quite funny, actually. Yeah, but also, but like, well, I suppose it would be more fun than anything, wouldn't it? Because you're like, well, then yeah. what? Then yeah, the glass yeah. goes in well, the neck. I would okay. actually uh, think what the best thing to do would be work backwards. Yeah. Mm. Well, the you'd, glass you'd goes in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> she tries to grab a tea towel, um, but the tea towel knocks a knife block over, and all the knives just start landing in her chest. Mm. Meanwhile, the kitchen's catching fire. And who happens to be outside because he wants to go and save her? It's Alex. And Al- Alex gets there. He goes inside. He tries to pull it, the knife out from it her. Isn't actually good, though, that he happens to keep turning up and being in the places when those people are dying. It's what, you know. Well, he tries to pull the knife out. That doesn't work. It's, it doesn't look good either. And just as he runs out of the house, the whole house explodes. And Stifler is the witness. And then the FBI turn up. Why did Embers make him know that she was in trouble? He saw fire. Some... So he just thought, oh, she's going to be on fire. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be a fire in her house. Because he saw some Embers from a bonfire. So he runs away. I love that bit when she does put all those knives down on herself. She's trying to reach up to get get up. Oh, it's just... She puts her hand... She's like, I've got a knife in my back. I just could put reach up this this tea towel or this whatever to get up and just pulls a load of ice down there. It'll go pretty pretty bing like you know, into a block of cheese. We should have also mentioned that she spotted Alex outside just before this happened and called the FBI and said he's outside, he's watching me. Oh I didn't to catch that. So that's why they're on the way there. Um It's just not good, is it? And no. then Stiffer randomly cycles in by at night time. He's always cycling on. Cycle. He's always cycling along. And he's just there, he just says, what are you doing here? And then the house explodes. He's like, oh, you know. Well, the FBI arrest him. They catch him. They take him away. Um, he says, like, you know, she was next on the list. Um, and also the next person on the list is is Val but no, not Val she's already died sorry um, he starts telling them about that and this is where they say this kid is creepy I'm starting to believe him and the other guy's like you're creepy you creep me out so there's a bit of weird banter between the FBI guys yeah. um, so they all decide they need to to meet up so um, Carter Billy and Claire all head to the beach to meet Alex who's now on the run because the FBI found his footprints in all the blood and the fire basically caramelised his fingerprints onto the knife in her stomach so he's fucked really he he looks very suspicious yeah Um, so they meet they go to meet him at the beach Um, Claire meets him first they have a quick chat and then he says they start driving and he says, "Okay, whether you believe me or not, this we are. There is an order that we're all going to die in." And uh, Stipper's like, "Is it me? Am I next? Is it me?" And Carter sort of loses it a bit and says, "Well, it's not me." And he puts his foot down and just starts driving really fast through loads of red lights. And uh, they don't die. And he's like, "I knew it! I knew it! I'm invincible!" Ha 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 ha! And then he says, "What is the point?" What is the point, actually, of living without my girlfriend? She's dead now. She got hit by that bus. I'm just going to drive us into oncoming traffic. So he tries to sort of take his chances. Ends up stopping on the train tracks. He's such a knob, isn't he? On the train tracks. Oh, um, I'm going to do this. Oh, I need some attention. Oh. So they all climb out and say, come on, Carter, it's not worth doing this. It's not worth it. No, I want more attention. And then at the very last second, he's like, fuck, actually, yeah, I don't want to die. But then his seatbelt's stuck. Oh. <laughs> but they just managed to pull him out of the car just as the train completely totals his beautiful car. Yeah, and he cheats death once again. He cheats death. Death must however, be going, fuck you guys. However, 
Stiff it wasn't. Lap. He wasn't next on the list because Alex didn't actually tell them he was next. And the next person, as you say, was Stifler because he stood there and says, oh, oh, "I knew it, man. All I gotta do is stay away from you. As long as I stay away from you, oh, I'll fucking survive." And then a piece of metal flips out from under the train wheel and, whoosh, yeah, takes his head clean off. Yeah. And then the police start to arrive. So Carter actually then says, "Look, you guys will go. I'll take the hit, the rap for this one. You guys get the hell out of here." And uh, Claire says, I've got a cabin in the woods, a family cabin that you can stay at for a bit. Yeah. Now, this is the, my least, probably my least favourite bit, really. It's just where he goes and lives in the cabin for a few days on his own and sort of uh, puts corks over anything sharp and eats cold baked beans out of a tin and wears gloves, all that kind of stuff, you know, because he thinks death's out to get him. You know, if the wind blows a bit of paper and then a fishing rod falls over and hooks the door... <laughs> And I kind of it's trying to death proof it. Yeah, it's just my least favorite. I don't know why it just doesn't really do it for me. This bit. It's no, I don't mind. It's okay. Yeah, I think you kind of got to get to this point, maybe, where you start to death proof something. It makes sense. That's the reason they've gone out to the cabin. So it's the follow on act, I think, which would follow on. Hmm. Well, basically, Alex says to Death, I can beat you. So, um. Yeah, but that's what that dude said in Creep Show 2 on the, the raft of the thing. <laughs> and that didn't work at all. I can beat you. I beat you. I beat, beat you. you. I beat you. <laughs> down, ba, down. And the music in the cast area. Down, ba, 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 ba. Someone's got, um,. If I remember rightly, someone's got a huge package and some speedos in that, haven't they? No, he's got, he's got his little, yeah, a bit, but he's got his uh, weed in there. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I knew it was a package. I just didn't know you, what it was. You knew that there's genita- male genitalia that you were noticing. I do notice these things. <laughs> I do notice these things. I've got an eye for a penis. I've got an eye for a penis. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, Claire calls it, uh, calls Alex or whatever. Alex heads over to Claire's and she's in her house. The FBI are on their way there because they think he's going to try and kill her. So they basically chase him through the woods. A tree lands on him. Uh, he, b- b- before this, he, he tries to have a talk with death, doesn't he? Mm, this is the bit where he says, I can beat you, yeah. Yeah, that that bit. And it's like, why are you talking to death? Because like, oh, we sh- we should also mention that he's worked out because he changed seats. That's the, the pattern. The pattern of people is different to what he thought it was going to be. Yeah. Uh, but he basically thinks clear as next. So he's heading to her house. The FBI are heading to her house. So they chase him there. He gets there, and then a series of crazy shit happened to her, where. She gets trapped in her car trying to escape whilst an electricity cable lands in a paddling pool full of water and a clothesline, spiky metal clothesline, is like spinning death at her as well. But she's grounded by the rubber tyres in the car. Yeah. Um, And uh, Alex runs along, hero of the day. Yeah. There's Dan. Grabs it, doesn't he? He does. He grabs the cable. He gets Ah! put... He gets blown back Frozen, through yeah. the thing, and um, uh, oh yeah, he, we talked about him getting almost drowned by the death. So that's trying to stop him because he almost gets drowned by the tree. But the, but they get away and they kind of beat it again, and that's kind of that really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a weird. Um, it's not really a finale. The FBI, well, there is. It, I mean, it is, but it, yeah, I don't know. The FBI let them off, assumingly, like they've got no evidence, even though his fingerprints were on the knife. It seems really weird. All of a sudden, they just be like, oh, "Okay, you did a good deed there. Uh, mm. We'll let you go." But yeah, then we see them in Paris. Like, well, oh. the, the, the the crux of it is because he died saving her, then they did CPR and brought him back. Um, that they've sort of wipe the slate clean because one of them's actually died yeah. and it's restarted it now so one of them's they don't know this yet but that means that carter is now next so they go to paris six months later they all have the balls to get on a plane and they go to paris that's a bit weird or are they doing that because their friends died and they want to 
to I mean, their memory. I suppose. They, I suppose. Yeah. It's like PTSD. They want to get over it by, you know. I, I, yeah, I guess. It would be like, quite hard to do, wouldn't it, get on an airplane though? It's cathartic, I think, isn't it, really? Um, but yeah, they do it. They get there. I can't believe we're actually in Paris. So you never would have thought you'd have seen the geeky loner girl, the geeky guy, and the bully all sat together in Paris having a beer. Yes, and then they start seeing signs once again. Mm, they do. Strange things. John Denver is being played by the busker. Um, lots of strange things start happening. Bus reflection. And then Alex pulls a bit of paper and says, look, I'm just I'm not happy about with the end results here. What if death starts again? What if? And they're like, oh, man, I'm not I'm not sitting through this shit again. Come on. So he says, Alex says, I'll get up and I'll, I'll go back to my hotel. You guys stay here. And as he starts to walk away, there's a bit of a crash. Um, a ladder hits a big sign on top of the restaurant and as the restaurant sign flips around it says 180 flight 180 on it and it swings down and narrowly misses Alex because Claire just pushes him out of the way and then Todd says you did it you cheated not Todd sorry um, he's dead uh, Carter says you did it you cheated death yeah and then whoosh, the sign takes him out yeah and then we get a cool early 2000s song playing over the end credits. And that is a hell of a bang to the end of the movie. Well, I don't know, because they, sort of, they, they do cut to black at a weird point, And it, it kind of leaves it, I guess, kind of open for, I suppose, a sequel sort of thing or something. It just doesn't seem to completely finish properly. It does feel a little bit rushed, the last 10 minutes. Yeah, like... like I don't know, it doesn't, like, when you have a regular film, it's like, say, it's Bruce Lee going up the different <laughs> towers to fight the baddie, you didn't get the bigger baddie at the end, it just builds up and up and up to, like, a big battle or predator at the end, it's a big battle at the end. And this, uh, it's a hard one, because it's just, again, another kill, so it's all the same. Ah, you've hit the nail on the head there, so they they've... They kind of shot the load early. They had all the good deaths Everyone's, earlier on. Every, well, every death is okay, but because there's so many, it's nothing. There's no different. Well, layers. the way that the way that Claire potentially was going to die wasn't that interesting. It was just being electrocuted by a cable in the rain. So you're yeah. right, and I, I think that's where you were going with that. Which is, it wasn't. I would have wanted something a bit more spectacular as a death for her, but it did kill Alex. So he got brought back to life with CPR, which meant they kind of reset death pattern and i'm quite happy with the way carter gets taken out by the big swinging sign yeah um, yeah totally but even like uh friday 13th for you like oh what's gonna be the death on this one what's jason could do you know still at the end of it they're gonna try and defeat jason where this you, it's because it's an invisible killer it's quite hard to be able to do that where for example the invisible man it's still an actual one entity which could be powered and taken down so there's no uh uh, uh the, the antagonist of this is not uh, something we can pinpoint and p destroy so it's a weird one I think in that sense that's well, what it feels a bit open I think what's good about it though um, and, and this is a thumbs up from me by the way and I'm sure a thumbs up from you as well um, oh, of course it's enjoyable uh, you know, it's, it's a, it is a modern classic you know thinking about it now it's 23 years old which is fucking crazy it, it, it took a lot of money it, and made a franchise so. it's, yeah and it's definitely a modern classic um, you know whether you like that or not it definitely is it's, it's a talked about There's, it's a franchise like it, you say what's clever about it is um, exactly as you said it, death is we're all going to die so death is definitely coming for all of us whether you believe that to be an entity or whether you just believe that at some point we're all going to die because we are all going to die what this does is it kind of gives it a bit of uh makes it a little bit more sinister because it feels like it's a thing that's coming for you and it's got a plan and always like death like i'm going to kill this person but i'm going to make it look like a suicide or i'm going to make it look like a really weird accident and it's coming after you and there's an order to it as well so it just feels a little bit different and it's it was incredibly original for its time. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a great concept. And I still think it is now very original. We've not really seen death come after people other than in all the sequels. Um, Bill and Ted. I just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he was a rapper in that. <laughs> um, you may be a king or maybe a street sweeper, but sooner or later you dance with the reaper. 
very clever cringe worthy um uh on the uh blu-ray um there's a extra which is just the score so you can Ooh. watch the movie and everything else is taken out except the score which i Beautiful. thought was really cool and that means that they thought this is a good score so um did you see the alternative ending oh I, I would have done because i've got the dvd but i didn't for this this time around remind me um where alex dies in flames no i don't remember that um it's really they kind of alex dies in flames and this i think was the writer's vision and i presume test audiences didn't like it so they had to change it um which is a shame because i'd have i'd been quite happy with that to be honest with you um as an ending uh killing off the main guy i'd have been happy in a wicker man style ending i'd have been happy like that uh spoiler wicker man um but then yeah. it's more though it goes on and on it's a really long ending to the point i was like fuck me how long is this alternative ending uh she has a baby presumably uh, yeah and I she calls him this. alex i don't know why i guess they're trying to think oh, we can somehow do some next final destination when we figure it out and then some wind blows and she goes alex because she thinks the wind is alex because she's now got a baby and then she's at a grave uh um with the jock guy and yeah. uh, uh what she say last thing she says has some bollock. yeah she just stands at the grave says a load of bollocks and then a leaf <laughs> comes down and goes in front of the camera and I said, like, fuck me. No wonder you cut that out. That's yeah. bollocks. Instead, they just smash him in the face with a giant sign off a building. Better. Better. What's, what's sad, not sad really, but what's funny is that obviously they kept Alex alive. And when they made Without Making Final Destination 2, Ali Lance was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be in that. And um devon sawyer alex said well i'll be in it but i want more money and they couldn't fix the contract for him and get him enough money so we, they just didn't put him in it and they killed him off yeah they That's they talk about oh he died too, didn't they with uh Fima jiggy oh yeah what, what why why are people such fucking egotistical dicks like what's he uh, he did he was that fan wasn't he that Limp Biscuit movie. No, he was Stan in. Um... No, he done. He's done a movie recently, which was actually. Um, oh really? I've heard, or have I seen it? One of the two. I think I might have seen it. Fuck's sake! Trouble is, though, I can never remember what I've seen. Um. 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 Oh no, he was in the fanatic. Fucking hell, he was a fanatic. Yeah, he yeah. was the guy that John Travolta fans over. That was a bad movie. He was in the Chucky series as well. So Hunter he's done- Hunter. That's the movie. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, he's the he's the dad that goes missing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, at this point though, he'd only really done the Stan music oh, video and Idle this. Idle Hands. Yeah, he was in that. Oh, I loved Idle Hands. And he was in Casper. Film. He was in Casper as a very young kid as well. Oh, really? Um, but yeah, so he never got brought back. And actually, when we get into it, they talk about Alex was killed by a rogue brick that fell off a building. And that's literally all they say about him in Final Destination 2. It's like, fuck you, Devon Sawyer. You were killed by a random brick. It wasn't even a specific, like a really cool death. It was just. It is a, a shame. Break. I understand where you come from. It's like, yeah, but that movie made loads of money. So why can't you? But it's just like, they're business people. They don't give a shit about that. They want to make the money. But like, if you're working actor, I, I don't know. Then again, sequels at the time might have been. A bit, almost still frowned upon a little bit. Like, oh, I don't know if there's a sequel. I don't know. Mm, I don't know. All right, well, should we uh, should we do something else? Yeah, well, Bill's waiting. His Uber's arrived. And uh, what's the list you've got? Oh, hang on. Let me see. Okay. Wow. This is interesting. Well, this, this is, is for... Well, I'll tell you when we get into World of the Strange. This is very exciting. Uh, Bill, do you want to take us into World of the Strange then? Mm, okay, then. Bill, go on. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. Of a strange world. It's a strange, strange world. It's a strange world. Hi. Well, thank you for that, Bill. Um, So, Bill's passed me this list, 
and this is a list of incredibly weird coincidental deaths so thanks bill bill's done the work for us this time oh that sounds pretty cool where did you get this from it's classified what do you mean it's classified what's that mean i don't know i don't know what he's talking about <clears throat> well it says some of these are brief and I d before you ask, I don't have any explanation for some of these, so you'll free feel free to go into detail on them if you want. Well, I'll just have to uh, uh, make up what's happening, I suppose. I suppose in some of them you will. Well, the first one on the list is... Great. A Brazilian man was killed in 2013, sat in his living room... Oh, sorry, he's asleep in his living room, and a cow fell through his house from the roof. What was the cow doing on the roof? Landed on him and killed him in his sleep. Wow, I don't know. I, I can imagine there's, there's a possibility there's a cow up there. I, I don't know why, but maybe it's an access point for the cow. And someone's like, oh, I'll keep my cow there. And it just fell through because the structure wasn't very strong for cows. I don't okay. know. That was, that's just a bit of an un, unfortunate... Is that sort of <coughs> thing when I... Maybe the parents are like, here's your baby child, your baby, congratulations. Brilliant. Looking at the baby going, I wonder if you'll die from a cow falling on you. It's a weird one, isn't it? It is a bit. Imagine turning up to that crime scene. Weird. Um, another one on the list is a Canadian lawyer called Gary Hoy died because he was trying to prove that the glass in the windows of a 24-story office building was unbreakable it wasn't the first time he tried this so he ran up get what he ran along and jumped on the bouncing and against it smashed it. into the glass so he did it he's done this several times to prove to people look this you, you, this glass is unbreakable why did he need is it is he the salesperson for the windows i'm not sure but why did he need to prove this i'm not sure but attention with all the times he's done it he accidentally loosened the frame slightly why did so he keep doing it so this one time he did it the glass still didn't break he was right but the whole window came out of the frame and he died he fell to his death Look, <laughs> so check he, it out guys it, oh you're new here aren't you look that's the photocopy that's the tea room check this out <laughs> like, these windows are so hard it can't fall through them if you run up again what's this oh, watch watch it won't break and then falling down and then just be that person turning around saying what, what the fuck he goes oh he always does it but doesn't only fall through like that you know, what the fuck Monica Mayer this is the next one Monica Mayer who was a mayor uh, of Betterton <laughs> Betterton Maryland what, she was mayor mayor yeah mayor mayor <laughs> Uh, she died because she was trying to prove Captain in her campaign Captain. as mayor that uh, <laughs> she was trying to prove that the town's sewage systems and tanks were in perfect working order. Whilst checking these, she slipped, fell in, and drowned in 15 feet of human shit. It's a, just another one you don't expect to. That's the way I'm going to die. I'm going to drown in shit. F shit's going to go down my throat. 15 feet of human shit so bad because you would just start vomiting at the same point probably like your body would just react like that to be fair it wasn't just shit it says human waste and feces so it'd be anything that comes out of a human and goes into the sewers it's Found a lot a it. lot of fluids yeah damn what do you think about that this is a good one this next one Sigurd Ooh. the Mighty Sigurd the Mighty who was a, a magician He's a 9th century Norse Earl of Orkney, so we're talking yeah. back in the day. He was killed by an enemy that he'd beheaded several hours earlier. <laughs> he tied the man's head to his horse's saddle to ride home and prove that he was the victor. But whilst I riding, am the victor. But whilst riding home, one of the victim's protruding teeth grazed his leg, which then gave him an infection, and many days later he died from the infection. So they could still, they, the beheaded guy still beat him. That's with an infection. Star, you damn it, you slowly got me, you headless <laughs> bastard. I had a friend who went to Australia. <laughs> you headless bastard. That's one of my favourite things you've ever said in all the years I've known you. You headless <laughs> bastard. Um, I had a friend who went to Australia for. A uh, while well, and just didn't do anything, but one night he went to drank a lot, got big, got fat, and drank a lot. Anyway, one night he went to a nightclub and he got into a fight, punched a guy, and the, the guy's tooth 
uh, uh, cut his knuckle and he didn't do nothing about it and then his hand it just his knuckle exploded it's a huge massive knuckle because it's infected Jesus Christ <laughs> yeah so yeah watch out for people's teeth people okay I'll watch out for that I'll just make a note of that the owner of the company that made seg- segways you'll probably know about this one the guy that made the, the company that invented segways Sinclair. you know what they are uh, no, he's not Sinclair. But, um, seg- but we all know what Segways are. They're those two-wheeled scooter things. Oh, yeah, happens. not the old Sinclair. <laughs> no. <laughs> not those. No, sorry. Not, not Clive Sinclair. That's um, it. The, seg- the owner of the company, he gave a speech saying that they were perfectly safe and they were impossible to fall off. Oh, a couple no. of days, A couple of days later, he accidentally drove his Segway off a cliff and died. <laughs> I love the fact that his people then he's like just got to just got to keep my uh my you know me looking like i know what to do no worries whoa it just it just imagine him like that a second where he just looks at the cliff and goes oh dear <laughs> my creation is my destroyer like frankenstein's monster as he goes off the cliff he's like sky now yeah take his uh, hold it one hand fuck you all in 1923, so this is 100 years ago, a jockey called Frank Hayes won the race at Belmont Park in New York, even though he was dead. He suffered a heart attack mid-race, but his body stayed in the saddle and his horse crossed the line <laughs> in first place. <laughs> and in first place. <laughs> and let's all go to congratulate him. Oh, he's, he's dead. dead. And how's that with the other people, especially when I came last? Oh, fuck, I came last. Who came first? A dead guy. Oh, how's that make me feel? I came two, last. Two years before that, in 1921, a US congressman died after shaving because his shaving brush had been infected with anthrax. Nice. So somebody, I guess, had poisoned him? Yeah, fuck yeah. That's some spy shit. So you're lathering up with a shaving brush. I love it. it smells a bit funny. You might have gone for a little while, like, I don't know, rinse it down, but you might still, like, poison would probably still be at least to trace it. And, like, yeah, it's just like, at some point you just cut yourself. Maybe not that shave, maybe not the next shave, but one day that shave will kill you. Mm. There we go. Well, Paul Thomas, the owner of a wool factory, wool, W W O L, fell into one of his machines in 1987. Did he turn, and- out, like a, turn out like a big crocheted massive human yes because he died after being wrapped in 800 yards of wool so the machine just carried on we're going woom, woom, wrapping and wrapping around, oh, and around I should, I'm sorry I shouldn't, I shouldn't when you see a to. mummy on a cartoon unravel or on the monster squad it's like that? the opposite of that I know respect to respect to respectfully uh, rest in peace I do apologise that says have you seen that video where that, that, is that f- they're just filming a person and it's the plastic tapes coming down and it's the new guy there oh that's the cardboard machine it puts plastic around the cardboard and there's a guy then he puts his hand oh, yeah. down it takes his hand and then he goes to get his hand down and it takes his head and he's like Barry Barry help me <laughs> Barry yeah. comes along he has to try and pull them both out it's fucking amazing Edward Harrison in 1951 was playing golf in Washington and he was angry so he snapped his driver over his knee oh did him but, but he tripped and the shaft lodged in his groin <laughs> He managed to stagger about 100 yards before bleeding out. Because obviously in your groin, you've got your main artery thing. Oh! Shit. In 1900, American physician Jesse Lazier tried to prove that yellow fever was transmitted by mosquitoes. He said, oh, I'll prove it to you. Let me get some infected mosquitoes. They bit him and he died of yellow fever. He was right. (laughs) <laughs> see i'm right <laughs> brilliant i get the last <laughs> australian tailor franz reichelt thought he'd invented a device that would make men fly he tested this device really? by jumping off the eiffel tower and it didn't work and he splattered on the ground <laughs> what did he make uh a device that he thought oh, a could device. make men not like a men potion. Fly. No. <laughs> Drink this. You can fly. Absolutely. Why, why did he try? He must have tested it at a smaller heights. 
Maybe. You don't go, like, I'm going to test this off this. Off the Eiffel Tower. Why don't you try, like, five foot? This is one that me and you can relate to. In 1567, the man with the longest beard in the world at the time... I wonder what you're going to say, but yes. His house caught fire. He tripped over his beard. <laughs> got caught in the fire and died. My oh, fucking beard! <laughs> I've got the longest beard in the world. This, this is brilliant. This beard started singeing. Oh, my God. Um, you'll like this next one. I like quite a lot of these. The Greek philosopher Chrysophius of Scilly is said to have died of laughter after watching a donkey trying to eat his figs. <laughs> it reminds so me, simple. It reminds me of the custard donkey from Hansel and Gretel. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> because that really killed you when we talked about that donkey stealing the custard. It was when I, mean, I was trying to explain the donkey licking man's bowl through his window, and it was just like the way the word went. Just when this could be something else, and it's very funny. But yeah, so this Greek philosopher died of I, laughter I like because it. he watched it's the innocent. donkey try and eat his figs. It is innocent though, isn't it? Oh, dear. Oh, 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 uh, actually, I think I'm going to die. I can't stop laughing. Imagine, you can't stop. You're just like, that is so funny. It's kind of, you expect like a, a bit of some butterhead. Then they start to die and they're just carrying ha, ha, ha. If there's a way to go, I'd probably want to go die. I want to die laughing, I think. That's a good way I to go. Shagging. And laughing. <laughs> Shagging and laughing at the same time and just totally insulting the, the person you're with who's going to end up going, yeah, they died having sex with me, laughing at me. Um, British actor Gareth Jones died of a heart attack whilst performing a live televised play in 1958 on British TV. In the scene, his character was scripted to have a heart attack. He was so good, he actually had a heart attack and died live on stage. Oh my god. So the scene Can he please for him to Oscar? die of a heart attack. <laughs> and then he died. Off. He was so good, he's like, I better have a real heart attack to really sell this. But, but the thing is, though, that is, <clears throat> that's him. Everything went through it. He went through it so much that his mind and his brain was like, oh shit, we're having a heart attack, and went along with it. It would have jump started and kick started different things in his body, which was equally just, it's all very much a final destination inside his body. His character, I don't think, was supposed to die, so the cast had to improvise the oh, rest of the play. What the, what the play kept going? Oh, yeah. Because they're British professional actors, Gavin. Oh, what year was this? 58. They kept going. He's actually died. Keep going. What do we do now? Um... Just keep going. <laughs> but is he dead? Can I think about it? Think about it later. Keep going. Fucking hell. To be an actor. Um, Carl William Schiel was a brilliant Swedish chemist, but he did have an unwise habit of tasting all the chemicals that he discovered. <laughs> He died in 1786 as a result of his exposure to drinking lead, hydrofluoric acid, arsenic, and other poisons. Drinking lead, hydrofluoric acid, arsenic, and other poisons. Well, if I'm going to work with these chemicals, I've got to have tasted them. It's the only way I know. That's weird. Oh, lead. Lovely. Good segue. If you want to know about more about eating weird things, uh, the High Strangeness <laughs> podcast I do with Sarah. I just came out talking about people eating weird things. Yes. Yeah. It's a good episode. Okay. Um, General John Sedgwick was killed by a, sni a, a sniper in the American Civil War shortly after uttering the words, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Bang. But they did. They hit you, mate. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> there we go. Uh, health fanatic Basil Brown. Not Basil Brush. Uh, how Basil. many? How many have you got left? Just a couple more. Okay. Health fanatic Basil Brown managed to kill himself by drinking a gallon of carrot juice every day. I've in heard the about this. It would make him healthy. Yeah, he could turn and started going orange, didn't he? He did, and then he died. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. He, he thought it was a really good thing. All he drank every day was carrot juice. I've read this. It's a fucking idiot. It's a bit mental, isn't it? Uh, in 1992, Greg Gingrich was stood on the edge of the Grand Canyon and pretended to do one of those fake whoop to his friends. 
he actually slipped and fell into the Grand Canyon and died. Not yeah, good, is it? It must be a slight split second. He's, like, he's actually started to fall off going, oh, fuck, I'm actually going. And like, oh, sh- I shouldn't have done that. There's another one right up your alleyway. An Irish woman died in 2008 after voluntarily having sex with a dog. The exact cause of death is unclear, but it's speculated that an allergic reaction to the dog or its penis may have been the cause. Oh. Yeah. I don't want to discuss it. Very and the final, the final one is eight people died in the London Beer Flood of 1814. I like that it's got a title, the London Beer Flood of 1814. People drowned Appar- in beer. Apparently, a giant vat, uh, an ale Fake brewery in London, burst, sending three thousand five hundred barrels of beer pouring through the streets, and eight people drowned in it. <laughs> Fucking How hell. weird. Imagine that, just a tide, like a tsunami of beer, just out of nowhere. <laughs> washing down and the, the people London didn't streets. drown. When it went around, just stand up, just fucking fall all over the place, because they're all fucks, because they probably drank some of it, that's for sure. <laughs> Everybody just fucked out their face. What happened? Oh, fucking ask her. I don't know. So there we go. So what's your... what? Before we wrap up, oh, what's, what's, the, what's what? Which one would you rather not die by, and which oh. one would you rather die by? Oh, I don't want to die by a uh... dog shagging. Well, no, because I don't even want to go there because that's not going to happen. Um... <laughs> Depends how nice the doggy is. No, no, no. I don't. What do I want to die? I don't know. I, I can't because you have to go. I'd have to have the list in front of me of them. So I I'd can't. probably I'd probably drain in beer, and I wouldn't want to die by dog shag. No, I can't remember them all now. So, <laughs> but there we go. So there, there's our, there's our word of the strange, Bill. Thank you for preparing your list of weird deaths. I'm not going to ask where you got them from. You've told me it's classified. Anything to add, Bill? Death has a plan. Yes, we know that. You're just quoting the film that Final Destination to us now. Nonsense. Right, get, t- take your list back. Take it back. Uh, Gav, that's it for Word of the Strange. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Um, take us out of here. Hey, Spoo. Bye. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird. Is that guy drinking beer? Final Destination Part 2 from 2003, rated 15, an hour and 30 minutes. Kimberly has a premonition of an accident killing multiple people, including her and her friends. She blocks the cars behind her on the ramp, and as a police trooper arrives, the accident happens. Death is stalking this group of survivors. That was a wanky IMDb synopsis for a film. Logs. Everybody knows this. Everybody, I've done it. I've put up even on our Facebook group. I've put a picture of me behind a truck with logs on it and going, "Oh, today's not going to be a good day," or "Hope today gets better," or you know, yeah. uh, everyone does it. Um, yeah, it everyone seems knows to be, it. Even non-horror fans seem to know it's there's just, a logs lorry in Final Destination Two. Don't. 
don't it's, be behind it. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And it's funny, it's just like not something you would have ever thought of, but now you're like, shit, logs. Um, this takes place a year after the first one. We'll get into the actual plot in a moment. But it came out three years later. Like we said, Devin Sawyer isn't in this one. Um, but Ali Larter does return as Clear Rivers. So does Tony Todd in the uh, the role of the mortuary guy again. But we've got a whole new cast in this one. Um uh main character being kimberly played by aj cook who i thought was brilliant she's really good in this and actually really likable characters in this i like the sheriff uh, i like the black guy that's got the motorcycle i like the guy that wins the lottery the coke head guy Much- i like the coke head guy the, 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 the characters are sort of a bit more i don't know they're mem- more memorable in this one i think in some ways the, the characters in this are uh, the casting's different the casting is more I don't know, not more likable characters because the other movie obviously has sort of likable characters, but some of these are a bit more likable. But like, shame we can't have some of these characters with the other ones to make the ultimate final destination. I think it's because the first one they could only really it's only high school kids mainly, so they could only there's only certain types of high school kid. Whereas this, in this, this one is, they're all this, adults. Well, it's anyone really, isn't it? Yeah, no. there's a kid as well in this actually. So. At least they kind of stepped away for uh, <clears throat> Friday the Thirteenth. Going back to that, I don't know why I keep using that series as a uh, uh, next to stand for this, but um, with that obviously they kept it the formula. This then obviously they don't. So like uh, maybe is in characters, but not as in age. Where Friday the Thirteenth it's always kids, young kids at the camp inside, and then older teenagers uh, looking after them. Yeah. Uh, but they've changed it, like you say. So, I guess we'll just get started on this then. Yeah. So, Final Destination 2, one year since the first one, there's been a news report describing the first film. Hour and how 30 all the... is act. Sorry? Hour, one hour 30 is act. Oh, is exactly. Act. Oh, yes. um, it describes the first film and how all the victims mysteriously died. It's an info after... dump for us, yeah. yes. Including Alex, who was killed by a random brick. And we do have a recurring character, or sorry, not really recurring, but a... Uh, uh, con- uh, coming back uh, returning from the first returning that's the word yes. yeah we don't see her until later on but um, yeah. no but there uh, is a connection that and Tony Todd in fact really so yeah indeed and Kimberly is our main character she's watching this on the television and she's like oh okay interesting yeah I remember that happening get ready for a car trip aren't they it's going on a road trip two ah. young ladies ooh we're and like two stoners two stoners in the back as well uh, in fact one of the stoners sees a, a nice pair of titties on the motorcycle doesn't he <laughs> <laughs> and he's so frustrated cause he's trying to tell his buddy to look but he's got a mouth full of weed and he's like look <laughs> You miss them titties. It's <laughs> so, uh, so, a weird moment, but it fun. is a strange moment in the back of a car on like a Saturday afternoon or whatever, you know. Um, I also like um, Kimberly's friend, uh, who she sort of uh, says in front of the dad, like, "Ah, oh, I'm getting really horny. Let's go pick up the guys. Did you get your whips and chains? Have you got your handcuffs?" She's like really saying all this in front of kimberly's dad and he's just like <coughs> have fun have fun on your road trip with the boys reminds me of one of my daughters oh okay interesting i was saying naughty things like no, that no, to try and wind you that, up not those things no i know what he means but, yes try uh, and wind you up were, uh, yes yes Teen, <laughs> teenagers eh? hey you bloody hey. teenagers yeah. um Kimberly sees lots of clues, just like Alex did, <clears throat> including song on the radio. Ha, way to hell. I love that. That is just, it's just, it's so obvious that, but you've got to do it because it's great. Um, she sees a kid in a car pretending to crash two cars into each other. She sees just lots of signs and clues that something might happen. Um, she pulls onto the main sort of highway and there's a crash that started by a log lorry we've described this uh yeah it's it's a great beginning of a movie because it's just the, there's the whole build up at the beginning these two two girls are going on this uh trip so straight away we're like car crash it's got to be a car crash and you just start to meet all these different people i love the fact that the dad sees he takes a moment to ring up that and we are in the land of uh, uh mobile phones at this point in 2004 
um, 2003, sorry. <clears throat> and uh, he takes a while to sort of say to them, oh, I actually saw brake fluid or some fluid, transmission fluid, coming from the bottom of the car as you drove off. But I'm going to give it at least 20 minutes before I ring you, rather than right back now say, yo, stop, can you come back here? Like, he says, can you just pull in at your next t- chance but, just to but, get, get it checked? But rings so much later, it's a bit like, that's not very... Did, oh, something came, came up. It's like, well, no, that's not a good thing. Um, I don't know. As a father, I didn't like it. So there's this little slip road, this little off-ramp, as they call it in the US. And, yeah, they pull onto the highway off this off-ramp. And the log lorry starts losing its logs. Um, they start tumbling out. The sh- there's a sheriff in a car who gets taken out a guard a motorcycle gets well, crushed well before this like you said uh, we're kind of uh, just as this before we sort of see this we, we start to see all the characters uh, and we've got like uh, the coke guy and the, the, I love the fact that the police go by the coke guy and he shits himself and he goes oh, oh fuck and he cleans himself up and just looks at him and goes oh, yeah, like, hi, hi, I'll he's like there. yeah that's right motherfucker and then when he goes off he goes yeah motherfucker yeah that's right motherfucker bitch uh. and it's just like it's such a good representation of a fucking cokehead it <laughs> yeah, really is speed a little. then you've got the other guy who we find out is won the lottery and he's motorbike, uh, motorbike. He's speeding along you've and got the motorbike all of these guy. things and you're like oh shit they're all gonna collide and have a fucking massive accident it's just yeah. and they do and, it, and again the budget goes on this a lot of it goes on this opening scene we've got great stunts and explosions the guy on the motorcycle particularly slides off his bike hits a car and then oh, his the, bike the car crashes s- into him oh he just gets crushed but just before again though i love the woman that's going along and she sees a guy she goes past a guy who's drinking and driving yeah and she and goes, it says am i driving yeah, responsibly goes, on the side of his car she goes oh i'm gonna put my seatbelt on Really? That's why you put your seatbelt on, just in case someone may be drink driving. Normally, you wouldn't. That seems a very stupid thing to do. It's also I a funny so moment. Mid-laced and serious, don't I? There's also a funny moment where the stoner sees the cop and he thinks they're going to get caught, so he flicks his joint out the window. Yeah, uh, and, it, and it lands on Cat, Cat, one of the characters' so windscreen. It, yeah, but it, but it doesn't do anything. But you're thinking, oh, uh, uh, that's like a, a red herring, and you think, oh, that's gonna do something. But it doesn't really do it. The cop, though, I know. Sorry, you got into crash twice. I've pulled you back. The cop, though, has a, a full cup of coffee without a lid. <laughs> vibrating <laughs> next to him in the thing, and you're like. What what's going on here, cop? You were co- you were out there detecting what happened to these people and how they got murdered, but you haven't put a lid on your coffee. Because <laughs> what happens? What happens, Dan? Well, he spills it on his lap and then he tries to sort of. <laughs> he doesn't then he even looks do anything. Up. He just goes over a bump. Yeah, he lo- and then he looks up as a log takes him out. When he got that coffee and he's like, and the cashier's like, "Do you want a lid?" No. <laughs> I've got this. Don't worry about it. Can no, you open the door for me, and if you can open my cup door, I've got really carefully get it into the cup holder in the middle console of the car, bent down slowly without spilling any of this boiling hot liquid all over my hands. I don't want a lid. It's fine. There. Right, here we go. It is <laughs> fucking Now I'm going to go on the highway. <laughs> yeah, just like... Uh, <laughs> Not even yeah. driving along slowly. It's right no. next to my radio as well, so hopefully it won't go spilling all over that. Well, going back to the crash, so what I described it. Amazing practical crash. Yeah, loads of cars, lorries, bikes, vans, death, fire, crushing, beheading. You know, it, it's all there. You know, and and what's cool very quickly is, um, what what you learn from this film is with every Final Destination movie, we're going to get like the signature big death scene at the beginning. It happens in the third, fourth, and fifth one. And it's always a different scenario, a roller coaster and NASCAR. So we, we had a plane crash, we've had it. So that's always something to look forward to with the Final Destination movies. Well, what's going to be the vision? What's going to be everybody getting wiped out and then pulled back to reality? Um, great. And she snaps back. Shit, I've just had a weird vision. 
And Highway to Hell comes on the radio. She she checks the radio. Oh, my God, that's the same song. Then she sees all the same people, and she thinks, I'm pulling off this off-ramp. But she, she doesn't pull off, though. She goes ahead and just literally goes, right, from a 45-degree sort of angle. No, 90-degree angle. No, 45-degree angle. And um, no, 90-degree angle. And stops everybody being able to come out the junction onto the the freeway so they're all just like beep 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 what the fuck so there's a cop about five cars back and he's just like oh for fuck's sake puts the sirens on indicates goes around them and gets out and says lady uh what's what's going on she's like there's going to be a massive accident i've seen it a lorry is going to wipe everyone out it's going to be the pile up like 20 cars and everyone beeps he's like looking back at them going okay and they go people go what come on and he's just like, looking back and go right you can't okay you have to pull over so we can discuss this and she's just sort of just like i'm not moving i'm just saying here that, oh, you've got to believe me this is what's going to happen and then the log lorry goes by and she says that's the lorry, that's that's the lorry. lorry. yeah and he says, look, come on. And then in the background, you, it's very, it's like the, the airplane explosion. Very well, subtle. Uh, well, people are starting to get out of their car because they're pissed off as well. So there's a lot more people um, there to witness what's about to happen. Which is, in the background, we hear a crash, an explosion, lots of screeching. And we don't really see the accident in real, for real. We just kind of hear it mainly. Yeah. Lots of explosions in the background. And then, um, well, it's really nicely done because obviously you wouldn't show it again because we've seen it in a, a, such yeah. great detail. Having it in the distance is just a, a, a an expense uh, or see, just not worth it. And having their reactions is a really nice way of doing it. Really, it's almost a happenstance that they have to do this rather than showing it again. All their different reactions and them all looking at her again, like they did with the first feather, Alex, in the first movie. Yeah, it's because kind of it, it, nice. It, it, because you don't often see the reaction to all these things. Well, you can, you do, but it's quite brief. Where this is like prolonged staying on. Same with the airport. I love that scene in the airport where the windows just blow out, you know, because that's like, well, that's what would happen but, if a plane exploded, you but know? What happens though? Well, we're focused. Well, he pulls her out of her 4x4 four four and says, like, come over here, you know, talk to me a moment. And then the last second, yep. slow motion, he grabs. Kimberly out of the way and her four by four with her three best friends in it is taken out is taken out by a lorry and more pile up just smashes and crashes left right and center Absolutely. huge huge pile up so all her friends are dead cut to the cop station yeah we're in the police station cop shop and we meet, we start to meet the people there's a, a lottery winner um there's the coat guy there's a mother and son um, uh, okay, absolutely pointless. Why are they here? Uh, they're just holding them until they've. Why? Basically, I, I don't know, Gav. It's a film. There is zero reason for those people to be there. They were literally just cars behind, wanting to go. How far? How many cars back <laughs> did they decide that they're going to take in? It's just pointless. I don't know. Only her is the re thing. Like, why did? How did you know that accident? That's it. <laughs> One of them says it felt a bit like Flight 180. No, she, Kimberly says it felt a bit like Flight 180 when that kid said he had a feeling. I just had a feeling. I love that. I, I love that ja uh, there's like a jock guy and he literally says, so, why are we here? What do you want from me? And I'm like going, yes, tell me to. Yeah, no, that's um, uh, the motorcycle guy. He, the cop uh, doesn't say. Eugene, he's like... This is bullshit. I'm not staying here. You can't hold me. I haven't done anything wrong. So the detective says, okay, you can all go now. Uh, thanks for your patience. What? Why they was I here? When Flight 180 is brought up, they quickly mention there's only one survivor and she's in a padded cell. Yeah. And so, I, love, I love the jock, which we're going to get to in a bit. I love the jock dude. What's his name? Uh, the guy that's one. Oh, the the guy, oh, the guy who's, that's Rory. He's kind of a metal type of a kind of... Um, uh, Evan, sorry, Evan. Uh, yeah, he's got an iMac. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Quite, quite an old iMac there. Well, um, just, just before just before that, Kimberly gets home. Um, she says to her dad, all my friends are dead, obviously. Great. Um, by the way, uh, did mum ever... Because her mum's dead. Did mum ever have any premonitions? And he's like, what are you talking about? And she says, I've just got this feeling. It's not over yet. Du, du, du. Cut to Evan, the guy that's won the lottery. Yeah. 
So he's come home, like you said, he's bought himself a tasty iMac, hasn't he? He just bought a load of shit, basically. Some jewellery, a ring. Not not shit as in shit, but shit. He lives in a shithole. It's just a, uh, it's just a, a apartment block. It's not it's literally no frills. Yeah, it's the basics. He's tripping over toys on the landing from the other tenants in the property. He gets into his house, and uh, his. Well, it's a death scene, guys. Sorry to spoil it for you, but it's a death scene. But it's a brilliant setup. It is a, it's a good one. This is a memorable one. If you said, like, Final Destination, what's your best killer Final Destination series? I'd be like, I, I, the, here's Ed Demise, which we'll get to with a ladder. You know, I like this one. Death by spaghetti, almost. The kitchen magnet falls into the noodles. Yeah, so he's heating up some food in the pan. It, and it, I wouldn't eat in that place. And then some of the shit, he's just literally just throw the shit in. It's just like, oh, man, that's not, doesn't look good. This causes the microwave to catch fire, but yeah, while yeah, that's yeah. happening... Yeah, magnet in the noodles, and then put the noodles in the microwave. But while that's happening, his ring, his new ring, has fallen into the garbage disposal <laughs> unit. So he puts his whole hand in there, but the Rolex he's bought himself gets caught, so he's stuck. Yeah. He's trying to put the fire out with one hand. He manages to pull his hand out. Yeah, because their fire starts up on the grill top. We should mention he threw some sp- old spaghetti out the window as well. Oh, that yeah. comes back in a sec. Uh, 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 yeah, but, yeah, but earlier on, I just threw it out there. I was like, oh, that's a bit bad. And I was like, you're nice. You're getting, that, you're getting some spaghetti karma, motherfucker. <laughs> so he, um, spaghetti karma karma. So he, yeah, he manages to escape out the window. The ladder for the fire escape's a bit stuck, but he manages to climb down it. He slips over on the spaghetti. Is that a massive attack song? Which one? Spaghetti Carbonara? Yeah. <laughs> it's the remix. <laughs> for, it was on the soundtrack for this. Karma, karma, karma. <laughs> Can't say it. Karma, 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 spaghetti, spaghetti carbonara. carbonara. Boy George did it as well. Karma, canabra. Um, he slips on the spaghetti... And the ladder la- slides down, but then stops just inches from his face. And he says, oh, fucking hell, it's my lucky day. And then the ladder delves deep into his eyeball. It's fucking brilliant. And it's a good death there. Very good death. Ladder in the eye. But the place blows up as he's getting out and down the ladder. And he's just, it must be like gutted. I just want all this money, you know. Yeah, and he's getting all these um, answer machine messages from all these girls that are like, hey, we haven't spoken in two years, but I really feel like hooking up. Or, hey, you lucky son of a bitch, let's go party. Yeah. So he's like, want all this money. And he's like, my life's just turned around. This is great. You know, you know he would have blown that money or OD'd in at least three months. He would have spent it on hookers and coke. Absolutely. He'd already bought a car, a Rolex, and all this other shit. An iMac. And uh, we cut to the the uh, cop who's been in this, so doing his own little private investigation. He's like a little own Columbo who's been watching it on Sundays like me. And uh, he's looking into uh, the first film story, basically. Yeah, he's researching all the deaths from the people that got off the flight. Um, and he sees uh, some stuff. Oh, Alex is dead. He got hit in the head with a brick. Yeah, everybody a- sees this and they're like, oh shit. A- AKA, he didn't want to come back because they didn't give enough good, money. That's not though, it? When you know that uh, uh, tiny Tony Todd's told you, uh, it's not, I can't do a Tony Todd force. He's told you about this thing. That's not good that these people have now death, dead as the well. Pi- the pile up is all over the news. There were no survivors. Everybody in, who was involved died, which is one of the worst traffic accidents in American history, they're saying. Um, so that's pretty bad, you know. No one survived. I think Mac um, sponsored this film as well. Uh, there's quite a lot of Mac products, very blatantly Apple logoed everywhere. The news reporter also says, and by a bizarre coincidence, um, a man who got off the highway, who also won the lottery last week, also died. It's not good. A, but a faulty fire escape ladder uh, impaled him. Yeah, it's not good, is it? And the cop's like, hmm, maybe there's something in this that Les Kimberly maybe. talked about. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Mm, I'm um, like Columbo. Very quick moment where we cut to Tim I'm in bed. I'm called Columbo. <laughs> maybe we cut to Tim who's in bed and he's, he's got, he was one of the survivors and his mum says, you got the dentist tomorrow? And he's like, okay, great. Brilliant. That's all we needed. Don't know why we see that scene, but we do. Um, and then Kim... 
Start because, scene. Because the dentist is a great scene. Oh, it's awful. For anyone who doesn't like the dentist, you're not going to like the scene. Um, Kim starts seeing weird sort of hand shadows made by the tree on her ceiling. So she's seeing signs. So she starts going online, looking up clear rivers. Um, and the computer gives gives her uh, the asylum information. Um, so she's like, okay, it's interesting. So she goes to the asylum to meet with Claire. Because Claire's dealt with this. She's dealt with death in the past. I'm surprised that she lets her in because surely she's, this person could be a threat and kill her. But before she's let in, the doctor says you're not allowed to take in your shoes, your laces, your belt, or anything sharp. No mobile phones, nothing, anything mechanical. And she's like, gosh, she must be dangerous. And they're like, no, no, no. This is what she's requested. She's here voluntarily because she's in a room that's padded and nothing can who, hurt her. Who pays for this then? The fucking state, I suppose. They would kick her out. <laughs> There's no way that you, you want to be involved. No, I don't think so. I don't yeah, know, I want to be. I want to be um, just looked after, just fed. Well, you can obviously section yourself. Say, like, I think I, you know, am to a point where it's bad. Um, but I, I don't know how long you could do that for. Well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Claire's quite short. She says, "What do you want?" She says, "Well, look, there was a big crash. You might have heard about it. I had a vision, just like your friend Alex did, and I think death's after me." And Claire says, "All right, well, look, there is a design." Death's now going to get you. Good luck. There'll be a list. You're on it. Just look for the signs. But I can't help you. I'm not leaving. She doesn't really give her much help. She says, look for the signs. Now, fuck off. Leave me in my padded room. Piss off. Back off, mate. The sheriff tells Kim in the next scene. He comes to visit her. He says, look, we're all going to meet at my apartment later on. We're going to have a little death party okay oh hang on what's that in the window i see a reflection of pigeons but there's no pigeons there Ooh, oh reflections that again mean something oh. that could mean could mean something death must be like fucking mirrors and windows smash them all kick in all these little tips and hints he also says i was there at the billy hitchcock death scene which is Stifler. He said, I scraped up his remains from the side of the railway. Oh. So he's, he's got a link, which we find out later on they all do, which we'll come back to in a moment. I so do. there is a reason. But we do go to the dentist now, which is nice and fun. Yes. So they, they work out that Nora and Tim were next in her vision to die. And, so and Nora, the mum, and Tim, the son. Isn't that funny? What's your connection? My in-laws are called Nora and Tim. That's very funny. It is funny. Um, there's also a character in this called Cat, uh, which is also somebody that we know as well. So there we go. There's yeah. lots of connections in this. But the um, Tim and Nora in this, they're the Carpenters because they're named after Johnny C, Mr. John Carpenter. Oh. Excellent very, very stuff. So, dentist. Now, there's a crane outside. <laughs> Fucking right. hell, this is the set worst the dentist in the world. Set the scene. Set the scene. So he's in the, he, he gets Ooh. up to get in the dentist chair. Tim. So this is a this is like a young sort of fifteen year old or whatever. Yeah. Apparently, they so, originally in the script he was nine, and they said you can't kill a nine year old. And they said, all right, twelve. And they said no, fifteen. All right, we'll kill a fifteen year old. He's fifteen. Okay, cool. He's fifteen. He looks fifteen. Um, yeah. Uh, so he's like laid back with his mouth open up. You know. Well, before pretty- he goes in, he says says to his mum, "Don't worry. If uh, if he gives me the gas and I wake up with my pants unbuttoned, we're definitely going to sue." And his mum's like, Tim, don't make sexual jokes. It's oh, a bit but, weird. Oh, I hate the fact that, that, that you think about it. It's like, where did that idea come from? That probably happened. That's the worst part, isn't it? Mm. Uh, yeah, so he goes in. He's lying back. Uh, Why do I feel very relieved after the dentists? Why do you feel... <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> Strange. I normally <laughs> hate a dentist, but for some reason I always feel quite happy after. I wake up and I think, oh, oh I've got oh, a fill in. And, like uh, a breath of fresh air out here. It really is. Slight damp patch on my trousers, but oh, well, well. Um, <laughs> so Timmy is lying back and he's he's having filling. So big, giant needle. And just about to get it, a fucking bird hits the window and makes the dentist go, oh, and he's just like, oh, my God. Because there's a crane outside. With his mouth these, wedged open. This crane outside is moving these gigantic pieces of um, glass around. And windows. You're, you're, you're basically playing, how's he going to die? What's going to happen? Yeah. 
while his mum's waiting in the waiting room for him, the, there's a fish tank. Now, this doctor must love fish, this dentist, because there's fish everywhere. And uh, the fish tank starts leaking. Um, and the water heads towards a plug socket, but it's a red herring, because that doesn't really do anything. Then another pigeon hits the window, just as he's about to give him the needle, oh and he says, God God's sake, sake. why do these birds keep doing this? Well, yeah, she says... Well, why do they... Yeah, go on. Yeah, she says, damn it, oh, hell. I love that he said, but he sort of questions it. Why do they keep doing this? Like, it's like, well, nobody knows. There's no reason. Like, They're not doing it on says, purpose. I've replaced this window several times in the last few weeks. What the fuck? I like, love that. Now, he says, how do they expect me to work? Hang on, right? let's break this down. How does he expect who to work, mate, let him work? The pigeons. Yes. How Is do these he, pigeons expect me to do my job? Pigeons expect me to work in these conditions. Well, one of the pigeons flies in to the waiting room window. Now, as I've mentioned, the bird in the house is a sign of death, says so superstition. So that's bad news. So they're trying to catch this pigeon. So he runs out, leaving Timmy there with the gas on full blast, which is like sort of basically he's high. He can't really move his body. No. And then there's a fish, like a rubber fish mobile or mobile above him with little fish on string and one of them just drops off into his mouth it's fucking great and he's suffocating he can't move uh, you know like, you know like when you wake up listeners and you wake up in the and your body's not quite awake but your mind is and you can't move your body and it's like that you're like i'm gonna die i'm gonna die but luckily the dentist comes back in and just pulls out just as we're like oh that's how he's gonna die it's brilliant and we're we're thinking we're like oh yeah this is how he's gonna die and he pulls it out and it is that elaborate, but we are we are pulled into that misdirect. But I love it. it just pulls it out and just kind of looks at him like, oh my god, like yeah. How are you going to answer that? Like I suppose it's not their fault, but he should have left him alone. I suppose. Cut to Sheriff Landis and Kimberly outside the dentist because they're there just to, to run and warn Nora and Tim. Feels weird saying that because they're my in-laws. Um, about their impending death. And the kids are like, oh, there's mm. pigeons. I'm going to go and chase well, the pigeons. She she's seen pigeons, hasn't she, in, in, as a sign. So she says, the pigeons, the pigeons. And he sees them and he runs towards them because he's a 15-year-old kid. But that makes one of the dick. pigeons... Good, it's karma again in this one. That makes one of the pigeons fly into the guy operating the crane. He hits the lever, drops the giant heavy plane of glass. This kid gets absolutely Squished. flattened in front of his mum. It looks Flat. great. It looks brilliant. <laughs> it's like a concertina just yeah. folded down to nothing. Yeah. It's just it's fucking amazing. Great. I watched it on slow motion as well because yeah. I was like, that must have been a mannequin, but it's really hard to see because it does happen so quick. It's good. It's good. By the way, these movies are all on Prime um, UK, for free. UK Prime, yeah, Prime UK. Uh, so if you've got, if you pay for Prime, you can just watch these without having to pay extra to rent them, and they look great, great right in high definition. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's another one bites the dust. Timmy's been flattened by the glass, so uh, that, that means Nora's next. His mother is next. The lady from part one has now uh, decided she's going to uh, leave uh, mm. and come help. I suppose. Yeah, first thing she does is take them to see Tony Todd. Come with me. Let's go and see there's the candy a guy, man. There's a weird guy I met in the morgue. I'm sure he has something to do with this. Why? Well, he told me about death design. Okay. He walks in the door and he says, Hello, Claire. I've been expecting you. He's yeah. such a great... He's just so good at being creepy, isn't he? He's such a, such a great horror icon because he looks quite a gentle, nice guy. But we've seen him as the Candyman and other movies where he's a bit sinister. But his voice is just like... Well, when Pete first moved to L.A., Pete, obviously Stormtrooper and uh, Star Wars film, um, uh, uh, he uh, actually um, met him and uh, he gave him his phone number and said, give me a call sometime. We'll go out and chat about acting and whatnot. And Pete gave him a ring and they went out for a drink. He said he's, really oh, nice. he said he's a really nice guy. I bet he is. I bet he is. He's one of those people that I'd love to meet at like, a horror convention. I bet yeah. he's a really lovely guy. Yeah. Not like grumpy old John Carpenter. <laughs> um, so, in the morgue, lo and behold, Evan, the lottery winner's body, is there. So, while he's explaining death's design and how death now working in reverse, basically he's, he's closing the loop and he's working backwards this time around uh, so they're wrong and they need to think about who was the last one to die in the crash 
he just pulls one of the nipple rings out of Evan's nipple. But I don't mean he undoes it. He rips it out. It's a bit much. And then in front of them, he just shoves the body into the incinerator. <laughs> he just laughs. <laughs> I love my job. Yeah, he's been fucking sniffing that. Uh, fucking uh, hell. Some of that stuff, hasn't he? Care the embalming fluid. Yeah. Uh, there's some <laughs> yeah. skate punks in it. <clears throat> Yeah, some little skate punks outside. And Good old skate punks. You, one of them smoking right by the uh, the gas pump. I love it. Our She's skate like, do wanna, punks. Do you want to kill yourself? And he's like, fuck you. Why did you suck my wang? It's like so See, these, early to the, these, these, are, these are why we wouldn't get invited to parties. <laughs> what? Films you like this like, representation suck, suck of our skateboarders <laughs> in the early 90s or whatever. Or 2000s. <laughs> um... Yeah, so they they suddenly remember while they're at this gas station, they remember there was a pregnant lady, and as they're remembering that, Kimberly has a vision of the pregnant lady's van in a lake filling up with water. So they think, oh, she must be next. Mm. Her car's going to crash into a, a lake and fill up with water. So we need to find this Isabella, this lady that was pregnant. And how can we find her out? He's like, I'm a cop. Trust me. I can find out, and obviously you can. Yeah. So, so they, they all trace, get together, and they're in an elevator. And there's a, there's a, a mum sniffer. Well, before that, let, let, so let's set this up. So they trace a number plate. They're gonna they put an APB, so they're gonna find Isabella. Then they all meet at the sheriff's apartment. So before that, we're all sort of turning up. It's like an AA meeting, but for people who are about to die. Um, Rory, the cokehead, he's such a dickhead. He gets in the lift and his foot gets stuck in the lift door slightly. And the guy who lives there says, "Oh, sorry, I've reported the doors to the tenancy." And his his shoe comes off, and he says, "Oh, is, is that dog shit on there?" And then he's like, face, and he shoves it in his face, and he goes, "You got a little something in your face. I'll, I'll get it off for you if you want." It's like, dude, it you're just such a really, just asshole. Really, yeah, he's just a dick. So they, they they go to the meeting. He definitely has issues, and I bet a therapist would just make him cry. Yeah. Well, in the meeting, they're all chatting. Now, Eugene, the motorcyclist, he's very sceptical. He doesn't believe any of this, this goddamn bullshit. Nora's obviously really upset because her son was just splattered in front of her the day before. Um, and they all start to, like, talk about... Kimberly's basically saying, look, there's signs that we need to look out for. You're going to, if I ring you and I, I give you a clue, you need to use that clue to save your own life. So if I tell you, I've had a vision about this, you need to go and do that to defeat it. And they're like, what are you talking about? No one really believes her until Eugene triggers uh, a mouse trap, which makes a snooker ball fly through the air. And then a canoe flies down, smashes through a window, did, did always a man- kills them. Man sniffer, uh, the mum sniffer. Sorry, it's because it hasn't happened yet. Oh, sorry. That's after. That's when she leaves the apartment. So we're still in the apartment at the moment. Oh. So then Eugene grabs the sheriff's gun and says, "I'm going to kill myself if I'm not. There's no way I'm going to die." And he tries to shoot himself. None of the bullets work. Everyone starts leaving the apartment. Nora goes into the lift. Aha! Aha! And. While she's in the lift, a strange man gets in the lift who smells her hair. This is what you mean. And this man is carrying... What's he carrying, up? Oh, I can't remember, actually. A box of prosthetic arms and hooks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's he doing with them? And he's smelling her hair. Like, who is this guy? I don't want to know. He's going upstairs and he's going to get freaky with those prosthetic... He is, isn't he? Handjobs. He's definitely going to, like, bind them off them, going, oh, I'm definitely having a wake over that. Oh. Uh, so anyway, while she's in the lift with uh, one of the other characters, um, the cokey guy, Rory, has a premonition. He sees a shadow of a man with hooks for hands. Yep. So they ring Nora and they say, man with hooks, look out for a man with hooks for hands. And lo and behold, her hair gets caught in one of the hooks. That's great. She tries to get out of the lift. Yep. And this actually happened to somebody. We talked about it once in World of the Strange. Um she tries to get out of the lift, and the lift doors, as we know, are faulty. They shot on her head. Some of our characters outside the lift are trying to pull her down. Some of them inside the lift are trying oh, to pull her back a, in. It's just a thing. Like, I don't like heads, not on bodies. I'm ne- not a fan. 
Yeah, and her head is uh, <clears throat> decapitated. It's not good. I love it when you see... He was um, just stuck in the lift, that shot, uh, the head rolling towards him is what you're about to say, isn't it? And it yeah, and he's screaming. But I also love the, the next I, shot. I'd be done for if I, that was me. But I love the next shot of them back in the apartment that don't know that's just happened, and they're all calm, going, all right, hopefully she'll be okay. And then Cat <laughs> and the other cats are come in, and they're covered in blood. And they're like... Uh, what happened? And they're like, Dora's dead. <laughs> it's like, okay. So one of them tries to shoot himself. Yeah, that's Eugene. And the, none of the bullets work. And that's <laughs> because... It. That's He's because not supposed to be dead. not but, supposed to be dead. But bollocks, though. Is that, so what, he could go do... What, is Groundhog Day, is it? What if he goes and jumps in front of a car? Can't totally stop it. Well, it's not until it's his time. Yeah, that's but death, he, that's death he, design. yeah, but he could go and commit suicide a different way, which is bound to kill him, like a great distance, a height or something. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Well, they figure the next thing here is Isabella. Um, we need to go off and find Isabella. She's pregnant, and only new life can defeat death. So we need to stop her from dying so that she can have her baby, therefore wiping death's plan. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's essentially the summary of it. So they go off to try and uh, find Isabella. Uh, and they plan to put her into protective custody so she can't kill herself by driving into a lake, which is what they think is going to happen. While she's in jail, her waters break. Indeed. And she says to the cop, you need to take me to hospital. You can use my van if you like. It's like saying, he's like, oh, OK, I'll take you to hospital in the van. So, everyone driving along, all the other guys suddenly realised they've all got links to Flight 180. One of them was the cop that picked up the dead body, as we said. Well, they, Somebody, say, they all say that they've cheated death before. They've all cheated death, and they all have a relationship in some way to somebody else that died on Flight 180. Yeah, so basically, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a weird, crazy, all of them, double so, whammy. Yeah, so basically, everyone that survived Flight 180 who is now dead because they survived they then saved a life of one of these people it, and it's like a ripple it, it effect it's a bit confusing well it's a, they explain it quite easily with it's a ripple effect because because they survived they changed a little bit of your life which meant you survived something so they've all had a near-death experience but they're also if you link back to flight 180 so death's basically picking up all the loose ends and wants to take these guys out because of those seven people that got off the plane in the first one. There's a lot more to it than that, guys. But um, that's, again, the summary of it. Car crash. Sorry? Car crash. It's yes. a big car crash now. Yes. Uh, Cat crashes her car and a load of pipes go slamming through the, the car. Yeah. Um, they all survive. Although Eugene does have a nasty wound, so they have to call an ambulance. Cat's legs are stuck in the car. Now, we should mention Cat is a smoker, so all the way through this film she's smoking. Smoking is bad, everybody, because whilst um, she, she flicks her cigarette and that causes a little uh, a bit of breeze to blow the cigarette and it goes down a pipe and starts catching some fuel on fire, which will come back in just a moment. While the um, fire department are trying to get her out, so legs trapped in the car, she says, ah, she's on Hurry the phone. Up. She says, is there any way you can put, make it a bit quieter? I'm on the phone. And he's like, oh, sure, ma'am. I'll put, put oh. this on silent mode. <laughs> it just slams this... Uh, 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 um. I don't know what you call it. The jewels of death, jewels of life, they call it, don't they? Okay. Get... Into the basically a huge, like, hammery type thing, just, you know, pendulum type flow into the car, side of the car, which activates the fucking oh. airbags, unfortunately. Uh, and she had a wooden, like, fucking spike it was thing plastic, behind, it? Plastic like behind she... her head. And it just pushes her into it. Yep. So she's now impaled on a plastic pipe and she's dead. Yeah. And as that happens. A little snippet of something it's that a comes good, back. It's a good in, uh, inventive kill. While that happens, uh, the ambulance is arriving, and the boy who lives on the farm that they happen to be oh. on almost gets run over. But Rory saves him. Oh. He says, you ought to watch out for yourself, little man. And he's like... It's a bit of a Resident Evil 1 kill. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, then Rory stands up, and there's a huge explosion of the petrol tank that's on the farm, which is where they keep all their fuel, and it 
sends some barbed wire fencing flying towards Rory and cubes him. He gets sliced into. Th- he gets what they call Gav trisected, not bisected. Trisected. He's cut into three. He's t- oh, he does. I thought it was meat cubes. <sighs> yeah, no, it's um, his sort of chest to his stomach, and then his stomach to his thighs, and then his thighs to his feet. Amazing. Yeah, and he just falls apart. So that's two for one there. Cat taken out by the pipes. Rory taken out by the barbed wire fencing. Kimberly's driving again and yet has another vision. Yeah, at this point you'd be like, don't let her drive. She's always <laughs> driving along the road and just spacing out of seeing deaths. <laughs> like, it's not the. Why? Like, the cops in there as well in the passenger seat. So, like, why are you letting her drive? She should be traumatised. Well, they're heading to the hospital because Isabella's having her baby and. Uh, they want to make sure that the baby's all right. She's had a vision that someone called Dr. Kavakian, Kalagian, is going to kill her. But that turns out to be wrong. But we'll come back to that in a moment. While they're in the hospital, uh, Eugene is on moan. a life support machine. I'm going to moan about death now. Okay. Well, cool. well, he's just there and he's on a life support system. His bed just starts moving by death. Moving it into I, a position that's going to kill him. So if death I can agree. do this, why cannot because death do this earlier on in different forms? Death can make water leak out of toilets. Death can make all these things happen, but, but I it agree. But actually move objects. Yeah. yeah, there's no reason for that. You're yep, right. Yep. It's a bit of a flaw, and it doesn't tie in with the rest of the, the ways that death behaves. You're completely right. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've noted that, and I completely agree yeah. with that. Um, Eugene starts suffocating because his oxygen has come out. Um, and then the plug comes out the sort of life support machine that he's on however the baby is born absolutely fine then Kimberly has a vision again luckily she's not driving thank god well as the baby's born Eugene's battery kicks in on his life support so he's alright and everything seems to be okay Um, however because the room is full of oxygen and there's a spark on the plug as soon as the door's opened on him the whole room explodes it does. So that's Eugene dead. So Kimberly realizes my vision actually was me in a van in the lake, not Isabella. So I'm going to drive this car into the lake, and Dr. Kalajian, who I thought was killing Isabella in my vision, is actually the one that's going to do CPR and bring me back. So I'm going to go and die in this lake, then you're going to get Dr. Kalajian to bring me back to life. Therefore, resetting death's design. All right, then, off you go. See you later. Vroom, splash, crash, bloop, 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 bloop. But he manages to bring her back, and uh, <laughs> yeah. she's uh, all right. It, it just the move uh, towards it before we, I don't know, at some point in this, all of this slight end in 10, 15 minutes, I was just kind of like, oh, can this film end now? I don't know why it's sort of was out seeing its welcome to me the funness of what the movie i'm in for had gone yeah again i feel like they didn't the third act is where this one and it's still a great movie it's really fun to watch because of the deaths uh it's a little bit funnier than the first one this one takes itself a bit less seriously because you've got some fun stuff going on and silly like the hair smelling and that kind of stuff but you're right, the third act is where things get a little bit like, oh, come on now, wrap it up, wrap it up. And it gets a little bit convoluted with the whole, like, visions of the van and the water and Isabella with the baby. I don't even know if we really needed Isabella. There was probably a way we could have done this without a pregnant lady. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But anyway, it, it happens. And she says, we did it, we cheated death. Then we get an epilogue. This is just not needed. Oh, I, so think it's fun. It's I think cheap, it's fun. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? Yeah, but they go back to the farm where they, you know, lost a couple of their friends. And the kid whose life was saved by Rory, because he's part of that ripple now, because Rory saved him. If And Rory should have died in the car crash, obviously, at the beginning. So this kid says, oh, did I ever tell you that your buddy saved my life from an ambulance? Anyway, I'm just going to go over to the barbecue and make sure it's okay. And the whole barbecue explodes and his arm lands on his mother's plate in front of her. her. She screams, and we cut to 2003 punk pop rock music. Yeah. That's it's it. Still a, it's still a fun one, in my opinion. It's still a fun one. It's just the first one, I think, 
was just serious and dark and brooding and a little bit more sinister. This one's a bit lighter. Got some great deaths, though. Possibly the best deaths in the whole Final Destination series, the whole franchise. I definitely love Rory getting cut up by the barbed wire. I definitely love Death by Spaghetti. And that dentist scene is one to remember, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there is some more good kills to go, though, when we do more sequels. Oh, yeah. I, just do a, I have to one day just try and remember our favourite kills. From the yeah, well, well if, if we do the last three, what we'll do is that we'll try and round up. There'll be a list somewhere online of all the deaths, and we'll say our top three deaths from all five films or something like that. But thumbs up for this one? If it's five films, we could just do all three of them, maybe. Smaller yeah. detailed. Just... That's what that's what we did for Jules, wasn't it? We <clears> just two, three just run them out, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, thumbs up for this one. Um, recommend, yeah. Um, like I said, it kind of outstays its welcome a little bit. Um, but it's all right. It's, you know, what you're getting. But you're here for the deaths, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's cool and it's it, it's like a new version of friday the 13th you know you're going to get some cool deaths you know all our characters are going to die it's just how is that going to happen and this time it's, it's an invisible force a couple of flaws with this one like we mentioned like why does death move that machine on its own like how can it do that but other than that you know good characters in this one probably some better characters than the first one just a bit confusing towards the end we didn't need all the stuff with isabella the pregnant lady but i'm still a big fan yeah um, so yeah, thumbs up. Not quite as big as a thumbs up as the first one, but a thumbs up. Final destination. I'll see you soon. On the yeah, but that was cool. Um, so I guess that's it, really. Let's take a little break. Come back for the outro. Outro. And we're back. We're back to say goodbye. This is our final destination of the podcast, isn't Ad- it? Adieu. Uh, um, sayonara. Auf Wiedersehen. Um, au revoir. Goodbye. I don't know. Fucking hell. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. <laughs> What's a goodbye in German? I can't remember what it is. Uh, auf Wiedersehen. Alvida's, I've already said it. Well, one of us did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, now. I don't know. Well, that's all the goodbyes we know. Anyway, uh, well, that was episode 140. Really enjoy looking at those two movies. It's been a long time coming. They're modern day classics, especially the first one. They're really talked about, even outside of the horror community. And um, yeah, we'll probably come back and do the other three at some point. I've not heard rumors of any other ones. It's the sort of thing that they'll probably do another one at some point, won't they? But. Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah, because we're in a strange place though with this whole Hollywood thing went on. Um, uh, I, I was expecting to see a lot more uh, films coming back on Netflix and Amazon of stuff because they're probably running out of new films, or we still might have that because it does take a while for films to be made anyway. So we're, at some point, we're going to have a massive lapse of new content, possibly. Um, yeah, which is weird because um, that happened with COVID, didn't it? We yeah. had a, a drought. And then all of a sudden, loads of movies got dumped into the cinema, but some of them skipped and went straight to streaming, which was great as well, you know? Yeah, it's a bit of a weird one, and see how it's all going to go. I need to to find out about what the terms they all came to with AI, because I'm very interested. I know that um, the main one I know is that Disney and Star Wars Marvel Studios all said they would work, because they have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different offices that do and companies that do, do the effects which is why the effects in one series look so different from the effects in another but they're all going to sort of try and tally silly. up they've got so no much money why I don't know. they have just one why are they this is the thing why they're like cheapskates to like effects all Basi- stuff. Like, why basically anything like on disney plus all the marvel tv shows look a little bit cheaper and they didn't have the budget compared to the Star Wars TV shows, which look insane. And Disney's obviously like, well, we're going to put all our money in into Star Wars. Whereas, actually, you own Marvel as well. Try and make that look good as well. So I think that's going to be ironed out a little bit. But apparently, some of these guys on some of these Marvel films who do the effects, they work like 
30 30 days straight without a break they're not allowed to take a break if they take a break they'll they get fired because there's so many people that want to do that job so they have to work days in a row it's like slave labor almost i mean well, it's obviously not that bad but they were going to strike as well also they set like a union up i think is mm. what they were doing um for that reason yeah but um it's all coming to a close now and hopefully we'll see the right you know people getting treated correctly because people say if you say to somebody i work in the film industry you, you think wow you must be doing great but actually sometimes it's really hard and you know that's why these people are striking you know yeah, it's, so. it's really hard because you work project to project but you could be literally like <clears throat> uh working for months and months and months on something like a designer making something and then be on set that morning be like, okay we're shutting down we've got no money that's it got everyone go home and you're like what and yeah. then it's trying to find the next project but you've just worked all your art off and no one's gonna ever see that work and that's this, there's a part of me which does dislike the the mainstream movie uh, uh, uh the way it works um industry i don't know i like i like what we kind of do a bit but i don't know yeah anyway as long as we get some good films that's what we all want to see indeed indeed well shall we talk about what's coming up next yes okay so we've switched things up a little bit guys october's coming i'm so yeah. excited because we're very late in getting this episode out um we've decided just to jump straight into our because it is october as gals just said we've decided to jump straight into some seasonal episodes so i'm very excited for our next couple of episodes um so for the next episode uh episode 141 we're going to be doing our tradition now which is the next two films in the halloween and the nightmare on elm street series which is halloween 4 the return of michael myers yep. from 1988 I don't, I don't mind this film really i i don't remember much of it it's not a, actually when you start watching but like, actually this isn't too bad um i think you'll sort of be surprised a little bit i when it gets part five i think it, i don't like part five and then we're pairing that up obviously with a nightmare on elm street for the dream master and i only really like the third uh second one so um you know cool but it'd be cool fun to chat about freddie and michael as always yeah, so that's yeah. it's, that's it's, the next one i do it's, in a way it's like i i don't ever really watch the nightmare on elm street movies so i was never a massive fan back in the day uh it was always halloween or friday 13th um but I did watch them, and for me, going back and watch them now, because I've only sort of, I've probably seen part four maybe once or twice, going back and watch them now, it kind of takes me back to an era of the, you know, late 80s or whatever, the horror movies when I was a teenager. So I do quite like it for nostalgia reasons, but I don't remember uh, it. I couldn't tell you what happens in the movie. I really love The Nightmares, apart from, I'm not a massive fan of number five. Dream, um, dream Warriors? Um, dream Child. Dream Child. You know, but they're great. And again, it's all about the kills and the effects. Uh, and but the Halloween stuff, it's it's interesting to go through them with oh, you. God. And, they started going bad though. Yeah, they, it's really hard to keep up with. with this the, four is not too bad, honestly. Yeah, so I've I, got I've got to watch these movies along with my thirty one and thirty one. I've got to do a lot of film watching this uh, hmm. October. And we're going to work our asses off to get that one out in October because obviously then that's going to lead into episode one hundred and forty two, yeah, so which I'm is around. our Halloween special. I've got some time off in October, so we should definitely, hopefully, get this going. Two episodes. Yeah, we'll get a month. get two episodes definitely. Yeah. And for our Halloween special, we are yeah. going to be covering. And we would like to do, like, we start, try to start a tradition of being together and doing commentary, but it just gets hard to be together because we have families and lives and it's hard. Yeah. But our Halloween special for episode 142 towards the end of October will be two sort of family comedy Halloween y type movies. You, probably, you might not be expecting these guys, but we're going to be looking at Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Oh, I love it so much. Favourite movie of mine. It's got everyone in it, really. Invisible Man, Dracula, I think Wolfman's in it as well. Vincent Price's um, voice at the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're pairing that up with, now love it or hate it, Gav and I are huge fans of this Adam Sandler movie, Hubie Halloween. I know Sarah be just going, oh, God. Now, I watched this the other day with my children. They seem to like most of it. They were a bit scared by Steve Buscemi. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a little bit full on for two-year-olds. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think when they get to like four or five is where I'll be wor worried about what they're watching. But at this point, nothing really goes in 
they just watch whatever but um okay so yeah hubie halloween <laughs> never thought we'd be covering an adam sandler film on this on this podcast but we are yeah <laughs> uh because we both just fell in love with that film a couple of halloween ago. Just like i loved the fact that it was so traditional and such a love letter to uh traditional halloween of the the set pieces and the, the traditions and all that stuff i was like and all the costumes on, that they dress up cool. in i know it's american and I, i'm uh, acquainted to obviously british halloween time but come on that was cool yeah definitely it's cool so that's what we're going to be doing uh there and then for the following episode 143 will be a patron episode i'm still talking to a couple of patrons trying to figure out what those two films are going to be but we will get a patron episode in after that so we're skipping a patron we're jumping to our halloween uh, our october episodes so we got uh, michael versus freddie followed by adam sandler versus abbott and Costello. so there we go make of that what you will yeah, 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 I really love that Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. It's going to be fun. It's going to be absolutely fun. Um, they're both. They're both pretty much. Uh, uh, you know, one's PG, one's twelve, and they're sort of family yeah, comedies. You can definitely watch them with your, your younger kids. You know, um, your teens. Something for everybody in there. And there's something for, if you're into Halloween or horror. There's you know you can just chill out. It's not too intense. So just fun. And that's yep. what Halloween should be. Um, before we do our, our admin, just a quick update on Star Wars Sanctuary Moon, our Deadbolt Productions, Gav. Uh, yeah, but today I locked the edit. Um, we, we are going to film one more little shot, possibly this weekend. Um, uh, just one little thing uh, and to insert into the edit. But I've pretty much locked it and I've sorted out today. I've sorted out all the audio and stuff. So it's made me feel a bit better. I felt like it's been stalled for a bit and it has been in a certain <clears> sense. <throat> so we've like, right, we've got to get this done. So we decided we're going to release it in mid-November um, only because we're going to get... It's very hard to promote it once uh, with all Halloween going on and all the Halloween stuff happening. Even though essentially it's a horror movie, it is a Star Wars film too. And then we can't release it any later because then it'd be all muddled up amongst Christmas stuff. So uh, mid November is what we're going to go for, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Perfect. Mm. Exciting. Uh, so yeah, I just need to. Um, put a couple of effects in very small effects into it and uh then just get all the sound mixed and some more sound design for things i won't say what can i spoil it and um pretty close we're probably at like like 90 uh 92 percent <laughs> nice yeah cool that's exciting <clears throat> So that's to look forward to in November as well. So yeah, that's yeah. almost been a year it's taken, which is just crazy. It really is. No, no, no short film of ours has been this. It's because it's such a uh, important thing to get correct. And we're definitely heading into my favourite time, your favourite time of year. I not love just Halloween. not Starts just Halloween, Sunday. but but you know October. And I really like November and December as well. I, I do love Christmas. I get a bit bored of it all by February when it's still cold and dark, and I want a bit of sunlight. But I'm a big fan of the next three or four months. My wife's birthday as well, and a few other things going on. So it's always fun this time of year. So yes, yeah, time to start getting cosy. Oh, let's have quickly talk about. Um, 31 so we're both going to be doing our 31s as always i'll be doing yeah, a little bit more but um i've, changed, I've chosen my list i put it up on the facebook page but i have I swapped one of my for oh shit i've not seen cujo i've popped cujo in there and um you know so you've gone for a mix of old and new films that you just mm, haven't seen i've never every film i've never seen mate a lot of them are old black and white films but apparently like not classics not that crazy well known but supposed to be pretty well regarded as a pretty yeah. good film that's cool and i'm doing um last year i did hammer horror so I, I think i did about 50 hammer films um i'll be doing werewolf movies i've got uh, just under 50 on a list werewolf movies I which are really cool man i'll cram in and i'm starting with american werewolf in london which although is my probably one of my favorite werewolf movies starting with that one i'm also going to do all the howling movies i'm ending and I'm happy to tell you this. I'm ending with my favourite werewolf movie of all time, which, as you know, is Silver Bullet. So that's the one I'll be watching on on Halloween nice. to close up the uh, month. There's a good uh, YouTube uh, uh, thing uh, from Hall Halloween's Hallowed Ground. as a thing. Um, they go to all the sort of the spots for America Ralph and London. It's about 50 minutes long. It's really good. Nice. Yeah, all the location spots. Watch that. It's really interesting. Then watch the film. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to a month of werewolves. I'm a big fan of werewolves, and uh, I'll be w- watching everything, comedies, you know, horror, everything that's got werewolves in it. I'm even doing Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. It's a good uh, film. It is good. It's very good. That's why uh, Shaggy gonna, turns into a werewolf, isn't it? I'm going to watch that with my kids. Hopefully they'll like that, because they love Scooby-Doo, so yeah. hopefully they'll like that one. Um, so, yeah great looking forward to that everyone and i hope you guys will be posting up what you're watching as always and it, you don't, don't forget there are no rules you don't have to do it you can watch one film you can watch 31 you can watch 31 in one day you can watch one you every day just watch rob zombies 31 oh that's a good idea you could watch that 31 times oh, what, Fuck what it, torture. I, know. I know that'd be hell wouldn't it mm. the only thing worse than that is sherry moon zombies sitting with you watching it Fucking hell. Laughing hate, like baby. I hate her. Um, cool. Well, yes. Make sure you post what you're watching, guys. Um, watch the Facebook page. And talking of Facebook pages, let's get into the admin, shall we, Gavin? Yes. Indeed. As always, we are the podcast on Haunted Hill. Thank you, everybody, for listening, supporting, sharing, liking, loving. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are a proud member of Legion Podcast Network. Um, you can visit them on legionpodcast.com, where you can find out about us and many other shows on the network. Uh, we're on uh, Facebook, as mentioned. Just search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. Join our family, our community of nutty horror fans. Apologies Especially to anybody. Especially in October, because we all get involved. Apologies to everybody that saw that disgusting post the other day. I had to delete and remove and block the author. Didn't see so yeah know. yeah pretty bad uh so that's gone um and legion podcast is also on facebook as well you can search for their page just legion podcasts uh, you can email me and gav at the podcast on haunted hill at outlook.com for any suggestions you have things you like things you don't like and just anything else you want to say really um you can also message me on in, on facebook as well um and we're available wherever you can listen to podcasts including spotify youtube Podknife, apple podcast Addict, many other podcast platforms uh we are no longer on twitter or X, as it's now called. Uh, but is we're still. Actually, on... Is it actually changed to X? Then? Yeah, it's been called X for a couple of months now. Um, we're now, uh, but we are on Instagram, uh, the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. And we mentioned Star Wars Sanctuary Moon. If you want to find out more about that, then Deadbolt Films is our production company. Um, you can go to deadboltfilms.com. You can visit us on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can go to Deadbolt Films YouTube channel. Uh, there's an Instagram which is just Deadbolt Films if you can subscribe it'd be really handy and you will of course be able to watch Star Wars Sanctuary Moon on YouTube at some point which is exciting yeah finally if you want to support the show and help us to continue to grow and put out content uh, and rent movies and buy movies that are hard to watch so we can delight your eardrums with our nonsense then you could become a patron you do not have to do this but because we we will still do this no matter what for free but it does help if you want to support us in the financial way Uh, to become a patron just visit patron search for the podcast on haunted hill if you can't find the link message me if you become a patron you will get a t-shirt you will get access to all the back episodes you will get bonus episodes and you will get to be a patron who picks your movies for a specific episode so every three episodes is a patron pick and whatever you want us to cover as long as it's horror adjacent we will cover it your two favourite movies, uh, whatever they may be. And then again, it, you know, it will come back around to you after a while. So It could be um, the Manuel film series. It could be anything. Hmm. And you can sponsor us. You can donate for as little as a, a dollar or a pound a month. It really is up to you. Um, so, yeah, Patreon. It would be weird if you're doing softcore porn, wouldn't it? It would be weird, but we've done some weird stuff on this show over the last 10 years. So, yeah. you know. Uh, the leprechaun movie springs to mind. Um, so, as always, I, think- I didn't realise in audition when she's going, what's she doing? Kitty, 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 Don Collier. Thank you very much. Matthew Godley. Thank you very much. Jamie Jenkins. Thank you very much. 
Kevin is five, five, five. Oh, thank you very much. Sarah Kay. Thank you very much. Rachel. Thank you very much. RJ McCready. Oh, thank you very much. And Lex Boo. Thank you, Sean. There you go. Gab gave you all an individual thank you, and I did a silly Fine. voice for each of you. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. We thank love you. you. We Always. can do this without you. You help so much with everything. And thank you for your patron picks along the over the last year or so. Um, keep that shit going because it is dope, as the kids say. The I think. kids say, yeah. I will try and um, make a couple of videos uh, um, probably in October for the patron page. Probably uh, going through my 31 and 31, I might just talk about them, maybe. That'd be a good idea. You could do a few at a time Might or something. Try, yeah, and do each one a little bit. I think I'll try. Maybe as soon as I've watched it, I'll try and record my thoughts. Yeah, good show. And uh, I'll get. Uh, I'm going on holiday with Sarah. We'll go for a weekend away to Whitby with Dracula from. Oops, you know, and um, uh, I'm going to film some. Uh, watch some stuff there, so I could film some of her as well, probably. If you want to know more about Gavin and Sarah and what they talk about. Gavin and Sarah do a podcast together. Well, yeah, I did. I did plug it earlier, but yes, the High Strangers podcast where we talk about weird and strange things. Episode sixty nine is coming up where we're going to talk about uh, sex by death, death by sex, sex by death, sex wow. by death. Like I was just, I was started dying, and somehow sex <laughs> came out of it, and I was alive. It was a great return. I didn't know whether I was coming or going. Exactly, hey. that would be the slogan. I also do a podcast with our buddy RJ McCready yes. called Blame It on the Aliens. I was listening where, to the vampire one today. Ah, perfect. Where we discuss um, conspiracies, legends, urban legends, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, our most recent episode was where we were discussing the origins of vampire folklore. Is it real? Is it not? Is it aliens? Is it disease? Um, so go to Blame It on the Aliens and listen to me and RJ talk about nonsense. Our next episode is going to be uh, the Antikythera Mechanism, which is an ancient computer that was found at the bottom of the sea it's hundreds and hundreds of years old oh, okay. and uh it shouldn't be it shouldn't exist and we're going to be discussing other ancient computers cool. and mechanisms are they aliens are they the were the egyptians aliens who knows i've got a theory about the egyptians i think they were aliens but anyway we'll, we'll talk about that on the show so that's that that's blame it on the aliens uh, there's the high strangeness there's this uh, there's everything it's all going on gav what were you pointing at? Your groin with both fingers. It's just like, what, what, there's this. I meant, or what? I meant there's this show, but okay. my fingers at the point. This is the show. But I'm the one that can see. That's why it's a bit like, <laughs> why are you showing show. me this? <laughs> anyway. It's totally phony. <laughs> Thank you way. for supporting us and what, uh, listening to us. Obviously, watching us. Thanks for Maybe watching through this the window. Shit. Like a Hello. dirty pervert. Hello. <laughs> is that your dirty pervert voice? Hello. 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 Oh. Hi. Leave your socks on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Say, say, use a banana. Oh, use that banana.